Back on Tiger pregame, joined now by the head coach of the Clay Center Tigers, Ted Brown. Uh, coach, you guys come off of a loss to Marysville, two straight losses to start the season. I mean, I'll, I'll point the obvious out. It's yeah. frustrating, it's disappointing, but yeah. talk about the guys, how they're responding, some things you've seen that you're, you're wanting to build on. Well, the kids want to get better. They come to practice and they work hard. Uh, and and they, nobody is, uh, I mean, it's just two weeks in, but, you, you know, sometimes you're, you're cautious and nervous about the kids getting really down. These kids haven't. They stay positive, and, and they're going to keep working and keep grinding every day. I asked you this on the locker room show. We refer to it quite a bit during our pregame, and, and I said, what's the one deficiency or the one thing you're focusing on? To, and you were already answering before I got the question out of my mouth, right? That was an easy one. <laughs> I mean, we, we kind of talked about it a little bit already, but if you don't tackle, I mean, there's blocking and tackling, the two essential parts of football. And if you don't do one of them well, and I don't know if we do either one of them well, but we're doing both of them, but one of them, which is tackling, is is got to get better. So we spent a lot of time this week on, on that. You know, the offensive side of the football, you talked about blocking. That big offensive line, we've talked about them before. They're young, a little inexperienced, but they're big and they are athletic. And there have been stretches in the games where they've done some really, really good things. Yeah, you're right. There have been. Um, but just like with tackling, I mean, you go out there and all of a sudden you're seeing other teams, 18-year-olds, 17-year-olds, instead of our, because we all are, some of our 15-year-olds are playing Friday night. So all of a sudden they're seeing these older guys and going full speed, and it's just, it's a different deal. Um, and so that's just been an adjustment, and we just, we just don't have enough consistency. And we kind of talked about that before the year. With a really young team like that, consistency is so hard to, to get, you know, so... We're trying to obtain consistency, and that's important for us. Do you think that week three is an opportunity for not only the consistency to maybe happen, but also for the guys to feel comfortable in the roles they're in? We've talked about the inexperience. and you're, you're Game three, you're starting to get to a point where you ought to know where you're going to be yeah. uh, for the most part, uh, unless you're switching people around. But do you feel that they have some more confidence in themselves maybe? Yeah. I think roles are starting to be defined on the team and that's important. We're starting to see the guys who are going to help lead the team and uh, people are responding to them. So absolutely. I think it does take some time when you're replacing all those seniors to find these roles and to get comfortable in them. And I think the kids are starting to uh, settle in. Let's look at Wamigo, your opponent tonight. Uh, what have you seen from the Red Raiders that impresses you? Fast team, uh, very fast. They're going to get on the perimeter, and you know they're going to. If, if you don't get in front of them, if you don't tackle them, uh, they're going to score a lot of touchdowns. So that's a challenge that uh, presents itself this week. Coach, as always, appreciate it. Let's go get them tonight. All right, thank you very much. Back on pregame in just a moment. Clay Center Family Physicians have 10 highly trained and board certified medical providers. From pregnancy through every stage of life, we are committed to serving you and your family's needs. With convenient locations in Clay Center, Clyde, and Lynn, you and your loved ones will receive quality health care services locally. New patients are being accepted in our Clay Center, Clyde, and Lynn clinics. Call for an appointment at 632-2181. Clay Center Family Physicians, our family caring for yours. Agriculture. Our country was built on it. Our children are fed by it. No one quite understands the unique needs of the farmer like United Bank and Trust. Whether you raise crops or livestock, you need the right equipment at the right time. Our ag loans can help you acquire and maintain that equipment when and where you need it. Contact one of our experienced ag lenders today. United Bank and Trust. Banking for your way of life. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. It's the start of another school year, which means taking stock of your kids' growth. Do they need bigger clothes, bigger backpacks, bigger internet speeds? Help equip them for success with the speed they need. Switch to Twin Valley Pulse today to keep up with your growing family and increased need for speed. Call 800-515-3311 now to get your first two months free. Service availability and speed will depend on location. Some restrictions apply. Call for details. 
With nearly 100 years of proven innovation in specialty chemicals and ingredients, Wilbur Ellis offers custom products and solutions to help you thrive. They work continually to be an indispensable partner in every facet of your agribusiness, from developing a customized program for your specific soil type to supplying the right seed and crop protection products. Wilbur Ellis has you covered. It's time to plan your fall fertilizing program, so contact the agronomy professionals at Wilbur Ellis. A football Friday night on the road for the first time for the Claysetter Tigers this year. They take on the Wamego Red Raiders. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Wamego. We weren't sure last Friday if we would be here or back at home at the Den. Red Raiders gave up a home game because of a problem with their track, which is non-existent here. They've taken it back out, but the football field is in great shape, and it's gorgeous here at Wamego. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to a football Friday. The Claysetter Tigers taking on the Wamego Red Raiders, along with our studio engineer, Bernie Fancella. This is Rocky Downing, along with Chet Carlson, Zach Elzinga, on a football Friday night. It's week three, two teams heading in different directions. And I, my point is this, for the Wamego Red Raiders, first time at home this season. For the Clayson Tigers, first time on the road. And both may be hoping things shake things up a little bit. Wamego won their first game against Concordia, then lost to Chapman last week. The Tigers, of course, have lost to... Abilene and Marysville and trying to get the ship righted before district play begins next week. Chet, it's a football Friday. It's a gorgeous, warm, summer-like night. The Tigers hoping to get something going away from the home cooking right now, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the Tigers, as you say, were 0-2. Wamigo's 1-1. and They haven't played at home yet. We haven't played on the road yet. But um, all the games have been conference games, which is unusual for the third week of the season and we don't have a common opponent. That's unusual, you know. So um, I think the teams uh, on paper match up very interestingly, you know. So uh, it's like who gets the momentum out of the gate. A lot like last week, Wamego lost a ton of seniors last yep. year. Now they've got some guys back that are a big part of the team. they got to re- – uh, re- I said a recruit. That's the wrong terminology. A transfer from right. Rock Creek. Here to Juan Migo and Tabor Vetter, who was very talented for the Mustangs, and now for the Red Raiders. He's been a big focal part of their offense to this point. Zach, it's interesting to me, we've talked about rivalries, Chet and I, over the last 24 years, and we're on our 24th year right now in the booth. It's always been Abilene, Marysville. I think across the board for guys from the era of Chet and into the 80s and maybe even the early 90s. It was interesting when Coach Ted Brown said that when he came in, the two teams they talked about was Abilene and Wamigo. You have a, what, what was the teams that got you fired up when you got on the field? Oh, the teams that got us fired up was probably Abilene and maybe Marysville. Yeah. But it, Wamigo wasn't one of them. Wamigo and Chapman, they were kind of interesting the last mm-hmm. four or five years how things have changed. And I think right. there were some things that happened amongst the guys on the field and different things, and, and that's why that mindset has changed. But he said when he came in, he goes, he asked the players, who's the teams you really get fired up for? And, and they're the two that came up most often for him from this group of players was Abilene and Wamiko. Well, and more often than not, it's going to be the same on the other side of the ball. I you know, so. You know, that's going to, there's a reason. So it'll it'll be fun to watch them match up. Man, it's beautiful out here. And it's toasty in this room, but it's, it's a beautiful night. And the night is going to get cooler as the sun goes down. It really will be a perfect football Friday night, I believe, as these two teams get set to go. The captain's meeting at midfield right now as we get set to work on a football Friday on the road for the first time this year. The 0-2 Play Center Tigers 1-1. One one. Juanigo Red Raiders, our pregame and kickoff coming out. September 9th through the 15th is nationally recognized as Driver Appreciation Week. Here at TSI Kansas, we want to say thank you, not only to our drivers, but all the drivers out there. We appreciate your hard work, sacrifices, and dedication to safety. Keep an eye on TSI Kansas. 
Robbins Motor Company of Manhattan is a proud supporter of Tiger football. It's time for their Ram Power Days. Get to Robbins Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, and Fiat. Come test drive the all-new 2019 Ram truck, the longest-lasting truck in America, now priced to move with Ram Power Days discounts and 0% for 72 months. Now is the time to buy. See their complete inventory online at RobbinsMotors.com or come visit them on West Anderson in Manhattan. Good luck, Tigers. Back again on a football Friday night. The Clay Center Tiger offense will get the football to start here this evening as both teams have huddled up, broke, and we're about ready to get this thing kicked off this evening. I asked Coach Ted Brown, I talked to you guys on the way over here to Wamigo. the one thing if you could focus on, as I asked the question, he started shaking his head and answering before I finished tackling. We've talked about it each Friday night. So yeah. I, the listeners can know we're being honest about the situation. He said if you, you could run any type of defense, if you don't tackle, it doesn't matter. And that's absolutely right, and that's what we've been saying. <laughs> they're, they're doing the hardest part of a defensive play very well. The easiest part of the defensive play is, is the tackle. You know, the hard part's getting there, picking it up, reading it, getting in position. They're doing all that to a T. They're just not making the tackle, and that that uh, that's so frustrating for fans, for the players, and for Absolutely the coaches. Absolutely it is, yeah. Tiger sends Sincere Sanders and Blake Frederick back to return on the kickoff as Wamego gets set to kick it away here on a Friday at the home of the Red Raiders. And again, a gorgeous night. There is a light breeze. It's supposed to lessen as the night goes along. The temperature will drop into maybe the low 70s by the time we get around halftime. So these two teams should have a fun night as far as the weather. We'll see who can get things going. Maybe the Tigers can make something happen here in special teams. Again, Blake Frederick and Sincere Sanders back to receive deep for the Tigers. Lane Musselman and Jake Ferguson out in front of them as the upbacks. Wamigo set to boot it away. Good crowd on home for the Red Raiders. Again, their first home game of the season. Tigers' first time to go on the road this year. They're 0-2. The Red Raiders 1-1. One and one. And the opening kickoff, your tasty pastry kickoff from Jaron Johnson is on its way. It's a short kick taken by Musselman at about the 17-yard line. Returns to the left, up to the middle. Now kicks to the outside. Sideline left, gets it out to the 40-yard line. And the freshman, Lane Musselman, taking it out. Good run. He, oh, man. Re- he read it pretty darn nice, Jack. He did a nice job. He, from the time he moved on the ball till the finish of the play, it was a nice play by Lane Musselman. He picked up about 20 yards on that return, took it at about the 20, I think, came out. Good field position at the 40-yard line for the Tigers. Dawson Humphrey, the fullback. Tigers go tight formation with Blake Frederick and Dylan Boone, the wingbacks. And also tight on the left side is Trevin Shirley. Correction, Jake Ferguson. Shirley is tight end left. In motion goes Moon. Glavin goes under center. Keegan McDonald then backs out of it. They'll look to the sideline to get the new call from the sideline. And Glavin goes back into the center. Wide to the right is Ethan Straw. Glavin, pitch out right, looking for Ferguson. Gets a blocker out in front. Now to the sideline right, 45 midfield, striping out of bounds. And a flag behind the play, well behind the play. And we'll see who this goes against. It would appear it would be against the Tigers maybe as a whole. That's like 10 yards behind the play. Yeah, there. absolutely. And it is holding against the Tigers. It was far behind the play. It was way after the play was done. Those are killer-type holding penalties. On first down, we picked up a first down with the run to by Ferguson. Here we're going to be marched back. It's going to be probably first and 20. It will depend on the spot. Well, the spot of the foul is about six yards down the field, so it may be a first and 15. Maybe, yeah. Instead of first and 10 at the midfield stripe, it's first and 15 back at your own 36. And, you know, people can point at the stripes. It was probably a good call. It's just a block you don't need to make. Yeah. Or a hole you don't need to make. (laughs) That's the way you want to look at it. First and 15, it is a five-yard net penalty against the Tigers. Laven under center as a receiver to the side. Surely off the line left, now to the wide side of the field. Ethan Straub, the wide receiver right. Logan McDonald, Tillman Hartner, Keegan McDonald, the center. Luke Coppice up on that front row. Dalton Brumfield, there's a handoff underneath. Short yardage play for Dawson Humphrey. Not much there. Maybe gets the yard. It's second down and long. 
I don't see a, an electronic play clock on this on this field looking as well. But uh, the Tigers have pushed it inside the five second count on each of the first two plays, so they're using up all the play clock so far. We got to watch the back judge. Second down, 14, Glavin in their center. Ferguson starts in motion, now backs up. They'll look to the sideline again for a new call. And then each player looks at their play wristband. It's got all the plays listed. And now in motion, Ferguson. Pitch out left, 4J, trying to get to the outside. Has a blocker out in front, Dylan Liu to the sideline left and out of bounds. He'll gain about five. It brings up third down, still 10 to go. Out to the 41-yard line. That's about the original line of scrimmage. Remember the first down yep. play, they had a carry to the right sideline for first down yardage and a penalty behind the play it cost them and moved them back. Now third down 10. Well, time for redemption here. You know, it's third and 10. It's it's kind of do or die with this play. Straub, wide left. Ferguson, they get in motion. And now again goes back to the line of scrimmage as the teams look to the sideline for that call. So they run a man in motion, see if the defense reacts. Then they look to the sideline, get the call and then go back in under center. That's where Glavin's at right now. Back to pass for the first time. Pressure coming. Ball comes loose. The Tigers will cover it up. Two Juanigo Red Raiders all over Cooper Glavin. And I believe Dylan Moon was able to come up with the football and save the turnover. They'll have to punt it away on their first possession. Yeah, whoever it was, they were the only white jersey in the area at all to recover that ball for the Tigers. Otherwise, Juanigo would have been starting with very good field position. Here they are. The Tigers are punting the ball to them. Um, all we did was lose 10 yards, 15 yards on that possession. Trevin Shirley to punt it. The snap is there. Line drive, end over end punt. Stops at about the 35 or the 40, I should say. Now down near the 35-yard line, and Strecker will down it there. So good job of the special teams. But the Tiger offense that time had opportunities kind of shot themselves in the foot a couple of different times. Well, they did. Um, they they showed themselves they can move the ball on Wamigo on a couple of plays. They also showed themselves they have to have their head in the game, you know, or they're going to go backwards, and that's what happened there. Now we get our turn on defense. Ty Cooper, the quarterback, Tabor Vetter, stands beside him. Numbers one and two, they run a lot of read option in this offense there, and then the first handoff is to Vetter to the right side. Tigers to a Pretty good job to stuff this up. Gain of maybe two, second down eight. Good pursuit that time. They had contact right at the line of scrimmage, and then two or three extra Tigers came in to make sure nothing more happened. That's what we need to see more of. Yeah, and Vetter is the one that you you told everybody earlier is the transfer from Rock Creek. So he was one of the good players for Rock Creek, now playing for Wilmega. Here's Cooper, option right, pitch late to Vetter. He has a sideline and some room to run. He'll be knocked out of bounds by Lane Musselman. That's going to be a first down carry to the Tiger 44, maybe five yard line. Let's see where they're marching down. 47 yard line, but into Tiger territory. And just a sprint pitch or option right, I should say. They did option, but I think that was a design run for better that time. Well, it might have been. It was a very well executed play. The pitch was perfect. Here is a carry by the quarterback Cooper this time. He's going to be racked up and put down by Dawson Humphrey tripped up beforehand by Dylan Moon and Logan McDonald. It's a gain of three, though, on first down, second down, seven. Wamego's wanting to get a little bit of a pace going with their offense here, and they're uh, up until I started saying this sentence, they were running fairly quickly. Now they're waiting to get a play in. They split a receiver wide to the left side. That is Adler Pearson. Here is Cooper again keeping it through the middle, and he is racked up inside. Keegan McDonald got the last hit in, but I guess Dalton Brumfield early on the play. Jake Ferguson had a hand on that play, a gain of maybe two or three. It's third down and four or five to go. Well, and here we're out there at about the 43-yard line. Tigers have a chance to make a stop, third and five. Cooper from the gun. Almost always they go from the shotgun, and now they have gotten the Tigers to move off sides, it looks like. And that's a free first down on a five-yard penalty. Tigers going three-man front. They want to stay in the three-man front because Wamego likes to spread it out, get to the seams, get to the outside. We've seen that already. They won't throw it a lot, but Cooper's capable of throwing it when they need to. Sure, and, you know, the Tigers, um, with penalties, have taken themselves out of the game on offense, and they just put Wamego in the game on offense with a defensive penalty for an automatic first down. Red Raiders at the Tiger 38-yard line. Cooper from the gun. 
He puts a runner in motion, Sack Rider. Now we've got a, it could be, uh, it looks yeah. like they, yeah. I think Sack Rider went in motion. Let me get you the number. Yeah. Uh, Brad Sack Rider went in motion to the right and turned up field before the ball was snapped. So it's a five yard penalty, first and 15. If we could have reversed the order of these penalties, have been nice. we'd be sitting on the ball now. But yeah, so now the Tigers have a chance again on, on defense. You know, we're still out of, in the midfield part of the field. And now Wamigo's looking at first and 15. We can uh, line up, make a stop. 8.39 to work. We're in the opening quarter. Red Raiders with the football. Zach Ryder again in motion. Here's Cooper optioning right. Pitches late. He has better. And he is, well, I thought buried. And then he almost got through. And now he is buried on the outside line. Cam, Osborne, Dylan, Moon, Lane, Musselman, a whole, yeah. I mean, a pride of Tigers over there making sure that went out out of bounds. Lane Musselman was the first one to him. The rest came and helped in support. How about Musselman stepping in to the position as a freshman? Been told he was ready. They just had to wait for the right time to make him be a part of what they want to do on the field, and he has been a big part of it thus far. Cooper, first time to throw it. Fires left side or sideline. Sack Rider has the catch. There is a penalty flag thrown as he makes that play. He gains about seven. It would be third down and eight, but there is a penalty flag on the play. I think it's on Wamigo. I, I think. The official is kind of huddling up to make a call and still have not given any indication, although Blake Frederick thinks it's against the Red Raiders. I see him applauding. He was over in that area. Maybe he heard the official make the call. It'd be a huge call because... Instead of third down and eight, it could bump it back to second down and long. They're having a hard time sorting it out. It is pass interference on yep. the offense. A good call, Chet. I know two weeks, Z, you've had a chance to kind of sit and not worry about penalties a whole lot. There's <laughs> been a bunch already in this game. Yeah, so far we got four of the first few minutes. It's crazy. I thought it was an offensive holding, but it was the offensive receiver was pushing off on, on our defender. So they'll bump them back now back into Red Raider territory, and it's going to be second down and a long way to go. That's costly. This moves while they go back to their own 41-yard line. Remember, at one time, the line of scrimmage was the Tiger 38. Right, and they were they were looking at an 8-yard gain on that. Now they're looking at second and 31. The Red Raiders at their own 41-yard line. Again, Cooper from the gun, back to pass, stands in the pocket, screen play left side, better has to catch, surely in position, works into the outside, now near the sideline, yanks him down, but he got him by the helmet. Yeah. And he ripped the helmet off as he made the tackle. I mean, Trevin Shirley was in perfect position, had a defender there with him, and he just tried to make a play, and as he did, reached out and found the, really the ear holes of the helmet and ripped it off. Yeah, you can't do that. I mean, you just cannot do that. You had him tackled for a loss. They were looking at second and thirty-one. It Actually, it would have been third and third and thirty-four. Exactly. But and now it is going to be automatic first down. Right. So they marched the penalty yardage off. And Zach, try. I'm sorry that I uh, cursed you on the penalty situation, but you're going to be busy tonight. I have a feeling. Second, it's still second and fifteen. Well, but now the football is a Tiger forty-three yard mark. I guess I thought that'd be a personal foul. I did, too. So, second down, 15. Cooper, again, to pass. Stands in the pocket. Rolls right. Now, fires downfield. Ball oh, nearly picked off by Cooper Glavin. Then caught by a sack rider. Was he in bounds? Nope, he was out. They called it incomplete. So, third down, 15. Boy, Glavin jumped the route, almost picked it. Then sack rider made a great catch on the sideline, but was out of bounds. He juggled it about three times, and by the time he had it pulled in, he was out of bounds. 8.02 to work. We're in the opening quarter. No score as of yet. Red Raiders now faced with a third down 15. This has been a really odd series for the oh, Amigo man. Red Raiders. Crazy. And the Tiger defense, I guess. It's that crazy. crazy. Dalton Brumfield, Gunny Mullen at nose tackle, and Keegan McDonald in front three now for the Tigers. Cooper from the gun now stops, looks to the sideline with his teammates for the call. 8.02 to work. First quarter, clock stopped after the incomplete pass. Third down 15. At the Tiger 43-yard line to pass. Quick hitter down the middle, has a receiver, and it's dropped. The pass on the money that time to Doug Rowdy Bush, and he just dropped the football. He may have had more than just the first down if he makes that catch. I think so because we laid out on the defense 
So we had nobody to tackle him if he catches it. And he had about a step on our defender, and he only had about another 20 yards to go for the end zone. So he just needed to play catch with his quarterback there, and he, he didn't get it done. Tigers now in uh, punt return formation. Big stop by the Tigers. Oh, huge defensive stop for play center. Braden Dorman in there along with Luke Coppice on that special team's front row. Back to receive is Blake Frederick. The snap and the kick is away. A high end-over-end kick. Frederick's going to let it bounce. It will roll out of bounds and be at the six-yard line. That's about all Blake Frederick could do unless a fair catch, but if he does that, it's about the same position on the field. It would have been. you got to let it go and hope it just takes the top spin through the end zone. Instead, it took a hard left turn and went out of bounds on the five. Remember, though, Wamingo had first down and 10 at the Tigers' 38-yard line, yep. and then things really got kind of weird, and now they have the football back. Let's see if they can gain themselves some room behind that big front row for the Tigers. Dawson Humphrey is the fullback. Jake Ferguson, Dylan Moon, your wingbacks. Ethan Straub just off the line right. Trevin Shirley just off the line left. Luke Coppice battling through a knee injury there on that left tackle position. And it's Cooper Glavin going to keep it himself across the 10-yard line. Oh, good yardage on the first down carry. He's about four. I like that play call. I like how, how hard Cooper Glavin ran there, you know. We took over with possession on the six-yard line. You don't have a lot of room to run a slow-developing play, handoff, be very deep in the backfield. He just punched ahead. He picked up five yards. We're at the 11. Second down five for the Tigers from their own 11-yard line. Blake Frederick in at the right wing now for the Tigers on offense. Under center goes Cooper Glavin. Works to the left side, pitches out left to Frederick. Blake trying to beat a tackler. He's going to be tripped up near the 15-yard line. A couple of yards shy, though, the first down. And starting from your own six, to get third down and less than a yard. The Tigers in pretty good position right now. Absolutely. Good run by Blake Frederick there. I'm trying to figure out where we're at. They're saying ball on the 15, so it is third and one. Tigers offensive line lines up. Let's see if they go quick on the snap to Cooper Glavin. Big junior quarterbacks going to keep it. Go left side. First down and 10. The Tigers move the chain. That was a big series of three downs there for the Tigers. Taking over that ball on the six-yard line after a good defensive stand. You know, and uh, here we are. We're six minutes to go still in the first quarter. It's been an interesting quarter. Tigers moving the chain. Blue Coppice, Logan McDonald, Keegan McDonald, Tillman Hartner. Dalton Brumfield up on that front row. Here's Glavin. Pitch out right side. It's behind Dylan Moon. Now he trips and falls. The Red Raiders are going to dive on it. Now they try to scoop it. Now it's still loose. And Juanigo is going to take over inside the Clay Center five-yard line. The pitch on the option to the right side, and Dylan Moon just could not corral it. Then it got loose, and he went to dive on it. He did the right thing. But he lost his balance, Yeah, couldn't get to it. Wamigo well, has a short field. He, he did. That's what happened. He lost his balance. His arms and legs were pointed the wrong direction from his momentum. Right. And uh, Wamigo well, had a bunch of defenders on the ball. 6.19 to go, and Wamigo well, gets the first huge turnaround in this game. They have first down and goal at the Clay Center Tiger three-yard line. Right, so I know it's going to be Cooper keeping it, and the Tiger defense right here stands up and makes the stop at the line of scrimmage. No gain, second down goal. Clay Center just handed them a gift here, you know, inside the three-yard line like that. Tiger D's trying to make a stand. Better, the running back, was optioning right side, and Cooper kept it himself and actually lost a couple of yards on the play. Now it's second down goal. Empty backfield, no correction. Better does stay in the backfield with Cooper. Spread across the line of scrimmage. The splits on the line of scrimmage are huge. Yeah, they are. Pull on Nico. Long play before they get it snapped. They do get it off. Cooper left side. He pitches late to Better, and he is stood up and racked up and put away by Blake Frederick, who will tackle him behind the line of scrimmage. It's third down and goal. Perfect play by the Tiger defense. They played the quarterback on the option. Blake Frederick blew up the pitch man as soon as he touched the ball. They say maybe back to the line of scrimmage. I thought he dropped him behind, but it's going to be, he did lose a yard. Third down and goal. 
They've lost three yards on the first two plays after first two goals to three. Here's Cooper. Wanting to pass it. Chased by Brumfield. Back to the end zone. Passes up for grabs. And out of bounds. Incomplete. It's fourth down and goal. Big time play on the sideline by Cam Osborne, who defended and drove the receiver out of bounds. It's incomplete. And that ball might have been caught as well. He was just driven out of bounds on the completion. Fourth down and goal, now at the six-yard line. Red Raiders will line up to go for it. Tiger defense trying to make a huge stop after the Tiger offense turned it over and gave Wamego first and goal at the three. Now fourth down and goal at the six-yard line. Here's Cooper rolling right. Now he's going to tuck it. He has to run it. He's past the line of scrimmage near the goal line, diving forward, and he is going to be short. And the Tiger defense is going to wow. come up with a stop. Cooper, Borthwick, Borthwick finally tucked it and ran it, and the Tiger D comes up with the play down near the goal line. I see Brumfield. I see Glavin. I see Shirley all coming up off the fire. I tell you what, what a big stop by the Tiger defense. We've had two now. One more at the midfield area of the property. This time, we give them the ball on the three-yard line. First play, they lose two. Second from the five. Next play, they lose one. Third down from the six. Incomplete pass. Then we stop them on the run. Huge stop for play center. Now, they do start first and ten from their own three-yard line, but they do have the football and no score. With 4.52 to work in the opening quarter, we have a timeout on the field. Tigers battling here in Wamego. No score. 4.53 to work first quarter when we come back. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. Ray's Apple Market continues to bring you savings every week to stretch your grocery dollars. One way is with Ray's Apple Market app. Download it today and start saving money right away. You can click on a variety of items you need and the instant coupons are applied at checkout. Over 8,000 users are adding up the savings and like the convenience of having the savings in the palm of their hands. You'll never know what you can save until you start using the app from Ray's Apple Market. 52 left in the first quarter. There is no score. The Tigers have dodged a couple of bullets. Huge goal line stand. Now they have it first down and 10 at their own one-yard line. I said the three earlier. That tackle was at the one, so that's where the Tigers take over. First to 10 from their own one-yard line. It is going to be a handoff underneath. Short yardage play, maybe a yard or two. That Dawson Humphrey or Logan Mullen in there right now. That's uh, Gunny that was the carry that time. On first and ten from their own one, they gain a yard, second down nine. We need a drone with a camera right over them because there's an awful lot of bodies to try to see through from here. No kidding. Red Raiders stacking it up on the line. Tigers have Ethan Straub just off the line to the right side. Trevin Shirley, the same to the left side. They're right in the middle of the field, so not a wide or short side. Flavin under center. Frederick in motion. They'll pitch to him outside left, and he's almost tackled the goal line. Able to fall forward and avoid the safety, but it's going to be third down and long from the one for the Tigers. Yeah, well, Migo had that defended very well. We picked up two yards on first down. Looks like maybe Blake got back to the pretty close to the one. No, he lost two yards. He lost a couple there. He he was lucky to get out of the end, though. He fought hard to make sure and not give up a safety. They're calling it one yard line. So third down and long for the Tiger one. Glavin, Ferguson in motion, takes the pitch, now handoff underneath, going tripped up, he almost had open space. Pretty good tackle by the Red Raiders that time, in open field to bring down Gunny Mullen. They do give some space, though, for the punter. It's fourth down and three, and they'll have to punt from inside their own goal line. Absolutely, Gunny picked up seven yards on that play, and he was rumbling. He was, oh, they just got his shoelaces there, I think. Yeah, they just got it. that right but I think they reached out, tripped him up. Trevin Shirley's going to be at two yards inside his own end zone, 3.05 to go. In this first quarter, the Tigers will punt for the second time. Shirley calling for the football, and we may have a delay of game. And Trevin Shirley bangs one downfield. Now the players kind of pause 
the official blew the I swore I heard a whistle that time. They threw a flag. I saw the flag, but I thought I heard a whistle. The White Hat's standing back there, and uh, I don't know. He needs to take control of this game. Well, and maybe I heard something else, but I thought I heard a whistle. Which bit, it looked like both teams kind of paused. Oh, it's illegal motion. Okay, illegal motion. So not delay of game. So the punt does count. Yeah. Did you not see both teams kind of just stand yeah. up? Yeah. I did. Think this play's over? Yeah. As it is, Wamigo has another That's great what field right. position at the Tiger 24-yard line. First down and 10, Wamigo. Tiger defense has been called on a lot thus far tonight. Tigers trying to get the right personnel on and off the field. Logan McDonald hustling to the sideline. Well, the Red Raiders have about three times as many players on the sideline as the Tigers do for this game. Here's Cooper, pitch late to Vetter. And outside, you got Ferguson, terrific tackle, and there'll be a penalty on top of it. Well, it could be holding or hands to the face mask. I'm not sure which. Well, Pitch Ferguson made a terrific play on defense. Yeah, it's holding on them. And and Jake Ferguson, he didn't fight off a block. He fought off a hole. Yeah. You know, to make that tackle. And it was a very obvious hole because he he was trying to pull his arms away from him. And it was, it was no problem for the official to throw that play. So 10 yards from the spot of the foul makes it first down. A long way to go now for the Red Raiders. They need the... 14-yard line, the line of scrimmage becomes the 36th of Clay Center. So first down and 20 to go. Red Raiders from the gun. Better ball fake. Now steps back, fires downfield, has a receiver, and the pass is going to be caught by Zach Ryder. Tigers saying it was incomplete. Both Cam Osborne and Lane Musselman reacting to the ball hit the ground. The official calls it a complete pass. It'll be first down and goal for the Red Raiders, or was it outside of the end? I don't know what they're talking it over. They may bring this back. It is incomplete. So Cam and Lane knew what they were talking about that time. Two other officials must have seen a bounce on the on the turf or something. And what beautiful turf, by the way. No <laughs> kidding. But, uh, yeah, the official on the other side was the one calling it complete. So second down and 20. <clears throat> for the Red Raiders from the Tiger 36 instead of what would have been first down and goal around the 10. Wow. Better to the left now with two receivers, three receivers right. Cooper's going to keep it through the middle and has some room to run. Finally tripped up by Dawson Humphrey. It will be a gain of about eight or nine. It brings up third down and long. Football now inside the Tiger 30 around the 26-yard line. Red Raiders trying to go a little bit quick with their pace. Cooper has Vetter just off to his right. Two receivers left. Now he moves Vetter to the left. Puts two receivers right. Takes a snap as he has a man in motion. Option play left to Vetter. He's going to be wrapped up and tackled by Blake Frederick. And it brings up fourth down and long. We said it last week, yeah. Chet. The guy's been strong outside. The sophomore makes another big play. Blake Frederick is probably our single most sure tackler on the team, at least this far into the season. I mean, I feel pretty good when I see them going towards him. What a great tackle. Fourth and 11. Fourth and 11 at the Tiger 25-yard line. Two receivers right, one left for Wamega. They'll go for it at the Tiger 25. Fourth down, 11 yards to go, or will they? Now a timeout's going to be taken by the Red Raiders. We'll break as well. You're listening to Tiger Football on KCLY. It was on every job. You called it Old Faithful. You don't want to let it go just yet because it still has some fight left. But time waits for no tool and neither do projects. Trade in and trade up to a new DeWalt tool at Hometown Lumber and Hardware. Just bring in your old DeWalt 18 volt tool with battery, whether it's working or not, and trade it in for a newer, better DeWalt 20 volt light tool and save money on your upgrade. Don't pass up on the chance of the DeWalt trade in program at Hometown Lumber and Hardware in Marysville. Everyone wants to be confident, and when you're covered by life insurance, you can be, because you know those who matter most in the world are protected. The Farm Bureau team in Play Center can help make sure you have the coverage you need so you can live your life with confidence. So whether that means wearing your favorite socks with sandals, or sporting that classic bow tie, you can rock it, because you know you're prepared for the future. If you don't have life insurance in place, call Farm Bureau agent Justin Padman or Michael Hodges at 632-2585. 
Farm Bureau Life Insurance Company. A minute 21 to go, first quarter of play. Tigers, Red Raiders tied scoreless right now. While Migo with the football at the Tiger 25-yard line, fourth down, 11 to go. Ty Cooper, the quarterback, from the gun. And signals left. Now gets the snap, wants to pass it under duress, and it is going to be incomplete. Dawson Humphrey nearly picked yeah. it off. Dalton Brumfield, Logan Mullen, both with pressure, and the Clay Center Tigers for the second time make a huge defensive stop. It really was, and Dawson Humphrey stepped in front of that ball from his linebacker position, and he had linebacker hands, you know, <laughs> and I'll tell him that when I see him, but it was a great job. He got his hands on it. The quarterback, Cooper, rifled that ball. It was a different pass pattern than they've been running, and he was trying to, to force it in there. Tigers have Ethan Straub, short side of the field, right. Trevin Shirley, wide left, off the line of scrimmage. And then they have Blake Frederick and Jake Ferguson as wingbacks Dawson Humphrey, the Pullback behind Cooper Glavin. Back to pass on first down. Rolls left. Fires out the flat. The ball tipped. He was trying to go to Trevin Shirley. And the Wamigo Red Raiders got a hand on it and knocks it down incomplete. Yeah, it was the the Tigers had the play developing a little bit how they wanted. And Cooper had his guy. He just failed to get it over the defender. You know, the defender was able to just get a fingertip on it and prevent the ball from getting to Trevin Shirley. Minute 13 to work. Opening quarter. Tigers. Red Raiders tied zero. Same formation. Straub right, short side. Shirley further off the line this time to the left as Glavin goes in under center. Second down, 10 to go. In motion goes Frederick. They'll hand off underneath to Dawson Humphrey. A little room to run. He takes it to the 30, maybe across. A flag comes in late on the play, and it appears to be holding by the reaction from Cooper Glavin. He rolls his hands in the air as if, what in the world is going on? It will be face mask. All right. Oh, it's against the Red Raiders. So here we go. First he misunderstood the call. And yeah. Thank goodness because now it's face mask against Flamigo and it moves the chains for the Tigers and puts them in a much better field position. Well, where the flag was thrown, it was in the area of holding. I agree. Or something at the end of the play. Fortunately for us, it was something at the end of the play with the face mask. So they moved the football to the Tiger 36 yard line and Clay Center has first down and 10. A minute eight to work, opening quarter. No score as of yet. Tigers have dodged a couple of bullets. Stopped on first and goal inside their own three to start with, and they were able to make a stop, get it back. And then the last series, the stop on fourth and 11 at their own 25-yard line. Cooper Glavin goes in under center. Keegan McDonald in motion. Ferguson and handoff underneath. This is Humphrey. Breaks free for a moment. Now further down the field, midfield strike, 45-40. Outside he goes and knocks it around the Rippel Amigo 35-yard line. The junior, Dawson Humphrey, big-time run for the Tigers. Tell you what, that's like a 19-yard run, something like that. I, I mean, it might, I might be 17, but he was rumbling, and he cut it upfield at a seamless side and then made the right read to go out to the sideline yeah. and then beat a couple of guys before they finally caught him with an angle and knocked him out of bounds. He was 15 yards downfield, and he still had both arms around the ball. You know, <laughs> First down and 10. you got to love fullback. Yeah. Here's Glavin. Ferguson in motion. Hand off underneath this time Logan Mullen. They've got more room to run. He's tripped up, and not before he takes it inside the Wamigo 25-yard line. Another first and 10 run. The fullback's going one-two punch right now. The Tigers are seeing something up that middle with the fullbacks, and it's worked for about 30 yards on the last two plays. So it'll be first and 10, 42 to work, first quarter. Tigers now at the Wamigo 24-yard line. It's so weird to be on this end of the field. <laughs> this whole first quarter has been on the other end. You're right. 32 to work, first quarter, clock ticking. Tigers go up under center, first and 10 at the Wamigo 25. Here's Glavin. He will keep it himself, rolls forward for maybe a couple of yards. That may be the last play of this quarter. We'll see if the Tigers run a play or just get to the break. They get two yards on the game, second down eight. Ten seconds remaining. And the Tigers do not look to be huddling, so we'll head to the second quarter. No score. The Tigers are threatening after one quarter. It's second and eight at the Wamigo 22 when we come back. 
Formerly serving you as crop production services, your Nutrient Ag Solutions retailer is always standing by. And the same faces you've relied on for years are now more capable than ever, no matter what comes your way. We're more than an unwavering partner. We're the first choice in the field to help you get the most out of yours. Our commitment is to deliver high quality products and service, and our customer focused teams will meet your crop nutrition needs efficiently and on time. Visit NutrientAgSolutions.com to learn more. Did you know Patterson's Health Mart Pharmacy delivers? That's right. Patterson understands that for many people, the lack of mobility and transportation make it very difficult to get their necessary prescriptions. That's why Patterson's make daily deliveries Monday through Friday to Clyde, Clifton, Lynn, Wakefield, and Leonardville, as well as Clay Center. You can even get same-day deliveries if you call before noon. First quarter in the books, the Tigers really played a little Houdini act in the first quarter of play. They were they were done for a couple of times, giving up scores, and they found a way to get around it. Well, absolutely right, but they shot themselves in the foot. When, I mean, when, when that happened, so you owe it to yourself to recover from time to time with a Houdini act. And now they have the football at the Red Raider. 22-yard line, second down, eight to go. Still no score. We're just beginning the second quarter. Laven under center. Ferguson in motion. They'll hand off underneath Dawson Humphrey. This time hit near the line of scrimmage. He may get a yard or two, but it was hard. But, if anything, third down long now for the Tigers at the Red Raider, 22. No gain on the play. We had two big gains from the fullbacks, two plays in a row, quick hitters, one for almost 20 yards, the other for 11 yards with uh, Gunny Mullen and Dawson Humphrey. Now the Tigers ran into a little bit of a of, uh, wall there in the middle on the last two plays. Have the Red Raiders pinched too far inside? That's the question. Here is a fake right or fake left and dump right to Dawson Humphrey and a good pass, and Humphrey's going to take it down to the 10-yard line. Great play call. They didn't just expect the Red Raiders to stop the middle. They faked an outside pitch and let Cooper Glavin kind of run naked to the right side, dump it off to Dawson Humphrey, big-time game. And the other nine guys on the on the field just took off for the left side of the field. The only two going to the right were Dawson Humphrey and Cooper Glavin. Cooper could have either ran or passed. He could have, yeah. Dawson Humphrey, good hand. He'll come back when you say he had linebacker hands and say, do you see the catch I made? Though? That's right. Here it is, first down and goal at the 10. Glavin, pitch out left, Blake Frederick has a blocker near the goal line. Touchdown, Tigers! Touchdown! Play center, Tigers! Blake Frederick kicks it in. Great block out in front. I did not have a number. Was it Jake Ferguson, maybe? I didn't see it, Rock. I couldn't tell. There was somebody out in front of him that cleared the space, and then Blake made a great pick. Absolutely. And that's the, whoever it was, I mean, that's a block. That's the block of the game so far, but Blake took that ball like he was on a mission. He was not going to be deprived of that end zone. I knew he was going to make it in that end zone. 10-yard touchdown run for Blake Frederick, and now the Tigers will go for two as Glavin goes in under center. He will roll right, wanting to pass it. Now it cuts it and runs it near the goal line, trying to get to the pylon. There's a flag down in the end zone. Away from the play, Glavin had the two-point conversion, but again, there was a penalty flag down. That's we'll usually what they call it. It's in the back of the infield or the end zone, which a lot of times would be against the defense. Pass interference on the offense. And so the Red Raiders will make the Tigers re it. Play center up 6 nothing. 10.54 to go in this first half of play. Now the Tigers will go for the two-point conversion at the, what, eight-yard line? That's what I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure out where they're going to mark this. That's a strange at the mark. 11. It's at the 11. They mark it at the 3 yeah. initially. How's it an 8-yard penalty? <laughs> a good question. Well, is that a spot foul from back there? Well, even then, it well, could be. Yeah, it could be. I think the Tiger sideline asking the same question. Obviously, are. everybody at home can realize we have no idea <laughs> that it's on the 11. Right. Well, the two-point conversion starts at the 3. Right. There was a pass play. There was pass interference in the end zone. And now the ball is marked at the 11-yard line for the two-point conversion. 
I don't think the Tigers sideline likes the answer they got, but nonetheless, the Tigers will go for two here after the touchdown run by Frederick. Pitch late, Jake Ferguson, two defenders right in the area, and they'll take him down at the 10. Clay Center, though, leads their first lead of the season, 10.54 to work first half. They're up 6 nothing here in Wamego when we come back. Hey, football fans, this is State Farm agent Dave Porter, thanking you for your support of my local business. Because of your support of my State Farm agency, we're able to give back on the sponsorship, the State Farm Fishing Derby, the State Farm Community Appreciation Day at the Clay Center Pool, and the USD 379 Staff School Year Kickoff. We appreciate your business. Visit ClayCenterInsurance.com for a quote or find us on Facebook. That's ClayCenterInsurance.com. Go Tigers! Hi, welcome to this Subway ad for the Italian collection. How would you like it? I'll take a rallying cry, please. Coming right up. Champions of flavor! Ahead lies a meaty, savory, and spicy trio of Italian subs. But let not these European flavors overpower you. Otanaki dance on the crumbs of spicy Italian, Italian BMT, and Turkey Italiano Milk. Go more to Subway and make it what you want. Limited time at participating shops. Blake Frederick, a 10-yard touchdown run, and the Tigers have their first lead of the season, first lead of this game, and after kind of an ugly first quarter, now you can maybe breathe and get, hopefully, some confidence moving forward. Tigers did a lot of things wrong in, in this first half so far, but they did a few things right. Unfortunately, they escaped the things they did wrong, and they cashed in on the things they did right. So right now we're sitting with a 6 to nothing lead on the scoreboard. Tigers will kick it away here. The Tasty Pastry kickoff coming up from Trevin Shirley. We have a couple of scores we'll pass along to you. As Trevin gets set to kick it away, Marysville up 14-0 on Concordia, end of one. Chapman Lee babbling 6 nothing, end of one quarter. And uh, Wakefield is trailing after one quarter, 8-0 in uh, their matchup tonight as they take on Gossel. Here is the kickoff. Short one's going to be picked up at about the 24-yard line. Return to the outside left, and oh, my goodness. The Red Raiders are going to tie this game immediately. The return from Ty Cooper, the quarterback, it was a odd kick in the fact that it landed on the turf for a while before anybody picked it up. It almost seemed the Tigers paused as the football did on the field, and then by the time Cooper picked it up and they were pursuing, he was gone. Well, I think that's what happened. I thought the kick went in in a perfect spot, and he killed it. I thought it was going to go out of bounds for a penalty, and they'd start on the 35. It stopped right before it went out of bounds, and we had pursuit there, but everybody just pulled up. He picks it up, he streaks the sideline, and all of a sudden, I mean, he had a quick start. He's, he's quick off the, off the start, and three yards later, nobody's going to catch him. So the Red Raiders now will get a chance to go for a field or an extra point after the touchdown run, a return of 60-some yards by the quarterback, Ty Cooper. We talk about doing things right and doing things wrong and wanting to do more things right than wrong, but uh, the Tigers just keep kind of giving it back. Jack Watson, the extra point try is up, and it squeaks across the goal line or the goal post. And Wamego has answered. A 7-6 ball game. Tigers trail by one. 10-43 to go. First half when we come back. Whether you're buying, building, remodeling, or refinancing, your home is a major investment in your life. At United Bank & Trust, we understand how important it is to work with someone who cares. Our loan officers have the experience it takes to make the process a smooth one. Come in for a visit or start online by filling out a loan application at ubankonline.com in as little as 20 minutes. Mortgage lending with United Bank & Trust. It's banking for your way of life. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Agmark LLC announces their 2018 Early Corn Program. The drying charges will be discounted for corn delivered to the Concordia Terminal between now and September 30th. The discounted drying only applies at time of delivery, and it must be delivered to the Concordia Terminal and applied to a contract. Please feel free to contact one of their merchandisers for specific details on the Early Corn Program. Call Agmark toll-free at 888-848-9979 or visit their website at agmarkllc.com. Tigers now will receive the kickoff after the uh, big-time return coming from Ty Cooper of the Wamego Red Raiders. Play center does trail 7-6 to six after that 6 nothing.
lead on the Blake Frederick touchdown run. The Red Raiders get the 60-plus yard return on a kickoff. And now a 7-6 ball game. Jake Ferguson from his own 16-yard line. Starts from the left, returns to the right. Now tries to split to the middle. Is going to be tackled at about the 22-yard line. Sure-handed tackle that time by the Red Raiders on the return by Riley Evelyn. <laughs> Tigers take over offensively. The good news is they had some good success on their last position. Oh, absolutely. You know, we we just came off of offense like one play ago. Right. Right. So anyway, um, yeah, the Tigers got something done, got to move the ball down, and got to move the chains a few times, so we just got to keep that that momentum going here. Another thing we found out there is Ty Cooper has some speed. Mm -hmm. Big time, yeah. We have corralled him. I mean, we haven't let him get outside the biggest game. He's probably had his seven or eight yards on a carry up the middle, but, man, if he gets open field, you're not going to catch him. Slavin under center. In motion, Dylan Noon. And keeping it is going to be Glavin. Last second decision to keep it and dive forward. Maybe get two, possibly three. It'll bring up second down. Zach, any numbers stand out to you from the what we've seen thus far? I mean, Blake Frederick has a 10-yard touchdown run. But anything really goofy or uh, not really interesting? Not no. really goofy, but a uh, defense blue held them to 36 yards of offense so far. Wow. Except for special teams. Yeah, exactly. Tigers may have gotten the Red Raiders to come off sides. And that's, that's a heck of a number to talk about. 36 yards, and that's what, four, three or four possessions. Yeah. And they've had the ball deep in our end of the field twice at the three and the 25-yard line. Exactly. Exactly. Tigers found a way to stop. Five-yard penalty here, second down, three yards to go, as Clay Center has the football out to their own 30-yard line. Dylan Moon, wing back left. Blake Frederick to the right side. Dawson Humphreys, your fullback. Ethan Straub, wide left, tight right, Trevin Shirley. Glavin, handoff underneath to Humphrey. Good room to run. First down yardage. Out to their own 35-yard line goes Dawson Humphrey. Dawson Humphrey and Gunny Mullins the same way. They get a seven-yard head of steam behind them there, and they're going to hurt you when you tackle. And he hurt two guys when they tackled him that time. First down, 10, football across the 35. They'll mark it at 36 of play center. Again, Straub is wide left to the short side of the field, tight right, Trevin Shirley. First down and 10 Tigers. Hand off underneath. They'll pitch out late to Blake Frederick. He's going to be tackled in the backfield. Nice play coming through the line of scrimmage that time by Jack Cruzy for Wamigo. If he doesn't make the tackle, Frederick has some room. Yeah, Blake had a little room if he can just get past that defender, but. And that was a great open field tackle by number 18 for Wamego. But, yeah, you're right. If he doesn't make that tackle, Blake gets a few yards. 9.09 to work. We're in the opening half of play. Tigers down 7-6 with the football. Second down 11. Frederick starts in motion. Now comes back to the left wing. Bill Moon on the right side. Dawson Humphrey, the full back behind the quarterback, Cooper Glavin. Keegan McDonald is the center. Again, Frederick in motion. Back to pass to Levin. Fires downfield. Has a receiver. Trevor Shirley passes caught at the Wamego 35-yard line. He'll be taken down there. Great throw by Cooper Levin. Trevor Shirley sure-handed. And the senior hauls it in at the Wamego 35. I tell you what, that was beautiful. That was a great pass. Great catch. Shirley had a step on him. He made sure he caught the ball before he did Agreed. anything else. That's a... 30-yard gain on the pass play. First down 10 for the Tigers. They mark it at the 36-yard line of Wamigo. Tigers trailing here, 7-6, to six, but marching here with the football. Frederick again left, moon right. Humphrey behind Flavin. Hand off underneath, and Dawson Humphrey's going to be tag teamed by about four Wamigo Red Raiders. There was nowhere to go on that handoff. But they've had enough success, Chet, you can see the play calling starting to feed off of what Dawson Humphrey and yeah. Logan Bowen have built. Oh, absolutely. It, if you can get those runs up the middle like that, or it's really not – it's between the tackles, let's right. call it that. And uh, and they're getting some success for it there. That helps everything else. Tigers have Dalton Brumfield, Logan McDonald, Keegan McDonald. Up on the front row, Morgan Siebold in there right now, along with Luke Compass. And a handoff underneath. Here's Humphrey. Breaks free from a tackle near a first down on second and long. He'll gain 10. It brings up third and gains nine. They'll call it third down three. 
and he was close to breaking that for six, Chad. Oh, I tell you what, he is so coached and disciplined to keep both arms wrapped around that ball. He doesn't want to put it on the ground. And, you know, he can be in open field, 30 yards downfield. He's still got two arms wrapped around Third down three. Play center at the Red Raider 30-yard line. Mike Allstott. Glaner under center. And now to Humphrey and first down yardage. He's going to take it near the 25. First and 10 Tigers, they'll mark him at the 26-yard line, but Dawson Humphrey making some money inside. Oh, absolutely. You remember Michael? I do, yes. He never just had one arm on the ball. He always had both arms wrapped around. If he had three arms, he'd have all three <laughs> arms wrapped around that ball. Dawson Humphrey's doing the same thing. Seven minutes to work, second quarter. Tigers down by one, but driving. First oh. down 10, and now we have a penalty against the Tigers. As procedure will move them back five yards. Don't want to give it up on first down, but if you're going to give it up, I guess that's the time to do it. Right. Tigers, though, have a little rhythm going here. They do. And that's, you don't want to break that rhythm. First down, 15. They move the football back to Wamigos, 30. Clay Center trailing 7-6. to six. Took a 6 nothing lead, and then Ty Cooper, a return on the kickoff following, gave Wamigo the tie, and the extra point was up. Barely clearing the crossbar, but was enough to make him a one-point lead, 7-6. to six. 6.40 left, first half. First down, 15. Cam Osborne in at a receiver right side. Glavin. Pitches late to Dylan Moon. He's got a block race to the 30, to the 25. Running hard inside the 20. Down near the 15 goes shoot the moon. Dylan Moon near the first down uh, on first and 15. I thought he possibly got it. I think he's within a yard or two. I think we're just short. It's going to be third and maybe two. Second, I think, in two, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, second. Off the penalty yardage, second down, and they'll call it a yard. Tiger's going quick. Glavin keeps it himself, dies forward, and appears to have plenty for the first down and 10. They will move the chains again. The Tigers now have it inside the 15-yard line of Wamigo. First and 10 down by one. we got a rhythm. we got a pace. We're moving the ball. We're moving the chains. We just need the points on the board. Humphrey, Frederick, Shirley. Now we see Moon, Glavin, of course. A lot of people sharing the football right now. Jake Ferguson had a great run that was called back on a penalty. First down and 10, football just inside the 15. Tigers down 7-6. to six. Cam Osborne wide right. Here is a pitch late left side. Blake Frederick trying to read one guy. That's Ty Cooper. He'll be wrapped up and brought down near the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of one. Second down nine. That was the same play we ran on the touchdown, right? That was the exact same play that we should have looked to see who was blocking that time. <laughs> you know, to, because that block is probably going to be one of our plays of the game. 5.25 to work, first half of play. Tigers trail 7-6, to six, but with the football at the Red Raider 14-yard line, second down nine. A little confusion on the Tigers here with their alignment and their formation. Cooper Glavin trying to sort it out. Tight left now, Ethan Straub. Wide right, Cam Osborne. Second down nine at the Red Raider 14. Humphrey the fullback. Frederick in motion right. They'll pitch to him right side, and he's hit the backfield and brought down. Great read by the outside. Defensive end for the Red Raiders who read it. Sack Ryder got there and made the tackle. Frederick really had no chance. No, and Jack Cruzy on the tackle. No, he was smothered right out of the gate. On I mean, as soon as he caught that pitch. Right. So now third down, sixteen. With four thirty-four to work, first half. The Tigers trailing by one. Football at the Red Raider twenty-yard line. Third down, seventeen to go. Would appear to be a passing situation for the Tigers in motion. Frederick back to pass is Glavin. Pressure coming and he is planted in the backfield. The ball comes loose. They're going to rule this. They fumble. It is picked up by a defensive lineman and he may take it all the way downfield. The Red Raiders are going to score on a stupid score by Ethan Holly, a big defensive lineman. He didn't make the hit. Glavin still struggling to get to the sideline right now. He is down on the field. A blitz on the opposite side, the back side of Cooper Glavin. He didn't see it coming. I thought maybe he was down, to be honest. So I thought he was loose, and they called it a fumble, and it was scooped and scored by a big fella a long way for an offensive lineman for walking. Well, we don't get instant replays in high school, but 
You and I both know what we think happened there, yeah. I I felt like he was well down, and then the ball came out. Regardless, here, here Walmigo has two touchdowns, one off of a kick return, and here one off of a scoop and score on a fumble here. Cooper Glavin and Herbert was the junior that did return it for Walmigo. Cooper Glavin took his helmet off. He was squirming around. He tried getting up lost, and he went back to the turf. Um, the coaches came out. I think he got the wind knocked out of him because he was able to get up and go back after a while. But he got crunched from the blind and side. did not see it coming. It was all blind side, and he got nailed. Well, the goofiest thing we're going to talk about at halftime, Zach, is, again, total yardage for Omega. They have still 36 yards? Yep, they still have 36. <laughs> yes, the play center is looking at 135. Wow. And both of their touchdowns were more than 60 yards. Crazy. On a scoop and score and on a kick return. But well, we still got the two for the extra point coming up, don't we? Yeah. They allowed Cooper Glavin to get to the sideline. And so Wamiga will line up to kick the extra point. The last one just snuck over the crossbar by Jack Watson. <laughs> so if, we'll been, if the holder would have been another half yard back, that, that wouldn't, wouldn't have made it. You're right. You are right. 401 left here in this second quarter. Tigers now down 13-6. They're going for two. Nope, nope. Extra point try. Watson back in there. Cooper is the holder, the quarterback for the Red Raiders. <laughs> Got to keep him honest. True. Tigers down 13-6. And now we've got a stop of play by the official. And the center, is that the center is coming out, the long snapper? Can't tell if that was a long snapper or one of the linemen either, next to him. It's either the long snapper or the guard. Um, it was a guard, yeah. Long snapper still in there. So still for the extra point try. 401 left, first tap. Tigers down 13-6. Kick is on its way. This time booted further and up and no good. Kicked it better, but pulled it left this time. Pulled it. There is a... Penalty flag down. Roughing the kicker. And it's going to be against the Tigers for roughing the kicker. And I assume that's going to be assessed. Now they may go for the point. They, they'll go for the two point maybe now. No, they're going to kick it again. They'll go for two now. I think so. And now Ty Cooper turned around and handed Watson the T and said, head on over, we got this now. So the Tigers came in late on the kicker, Watson. And the roughing the kicker gives Wamego a chance for a two-point conversion inside the three. Still 4-0-1 left second quarter. Tigers down 13-6. Cooper looks to the sideline for the call. Wamego up by seven. Two-point conversion try after the roughing the kicker. It's left for better, and he gets to the corner, gets to the pylon, and has the two-point conversion. 15-6, Tigers now trail by two scores, down nine here in the opening half. 4 one left, second quarter when we come back. It's the start of another school year, which means taking stock of your kids' growth. Do they need bigger clothes, bigger backpacks, bigger internet speeds? Help equip them for success with the speed they need. Switch to Twin Valley Pulse today to keep up with your growing family and increased need for speed. Call 800-515-3311 now to get your first two months free. Service availability and speed will depend on location. Some restrictions apply. Call for details. Hey folks, Bill Rice from the Green Team. Several years ago, the strongest man I've ever known, my father, Clarence Rice, was diagnosed and then ravaged by Alzheimer's. We the Green Team would like to do September for every new or used vehicle sold, we'll make a donation to the Alzheimer Association. And also on September 22nd in Manhattan, Kansas, they will have the Walk to Hip Alzheimer's. So stop by the dealership for more information and see how you can help. The Tigers had a 6 nothing lead, and now Wamigo has scored 15 unanswered on a kickoff return and an offensive lineman scoop and score, both from over 60 yards away. Yeah, how crazy is that? Yeah. Tigers have Lane Musselman and Sincere Sanders back to receive. In front of them is 
Jake Ferguson. Well, and the other thing we, we are anxious to see here is who comes out at quarterback. Because Cooper Glavin, yeah. last time he was on the field, he was getting up from just getting nailed from the back uh, blind side. He is still on the sideline. I don't see a helmet, though, with him, so that would lead me to believe that Brad Pyle, as he's standing next to him, talking with him, that he would not likely return on this next series, but we'll see. And if so, Blake Frederick would take over as quarterback. 4-0-1 left, first half. Tigers down 15-6. Wamigo with the kickoff. And the boot is on its way. Line drive end over end. Taken by Muslim in his own 25. Return to the middle. Now to the right side, he's crunched by three Red Raider defenders. And Clay Center will take over his own 35-yard line. The freshman Lane Musselman on the return. Well, he got smoked on that tackle. Three guys. Yeah. I mean, he really got drilled, but he just jumps up. I mean, it, to be a freshman and to return a kickoff on a Friday night, he just jumped up and here we go. Go do his job, which he's done a good job defensively already tonight as well. Yep. So the Tigers do take over. Blake Frederick is in a quarterback. Cooper Glavin took that hard shot on the fumble that was returned for a touchdown. Still remains on the sideline. Frederick goes under center. In motion, Dylan Moon. Pitch out right for Moon. Trying to get to the sideline and does squirt across the 40-yard line. Picks up good, maybe five yards on that first down carry. Uh, if he stayed in, maybe it might be more. I think he got seven. Seven-yard gain, Dylan Moon. Second down three. He rolled over the top of the tackler, and he was still in inbound. So he got a couple more on the tackle. Good run by Dylan Moon. 3.38 left first half. Tigers trail now, 15-6. Logan Mullen in behind Blake Frederick. Mullen the fullback. Frederick now the quarterback with Glavin out of the game. In motion, Jake Ferguson. Handoff underneath to Johnny Mullen. First down and more. He'll take it out near the midfield stripe. And the Tigers have something working here as they move it from first and 10 to the 50-yard line. Gunny Mullen got three yards into the defensive backfield with that run, and he takes a cut to the right. We aren't seeing these fullbacks do a lot of cuts. They're just north and south. Right. You know, he takes a cut to the right, picks up five more yards, first and 10 at the 50. Mullen stays in at fullback. Moon and Ferguson, the wingbacks. Blake Frederick in a quarterback right now. And motion goes Ferguson. Pitch out left for Jay. To the outside he goes. A couple of blockers and good yardage, but a penalty flag down. It's a tough call if it's on Dalton Brumfield, which I think it is. There were two defenders that he was sandwiched between, and it got him for a holding call. Yeah, it's either Dalton Brumfield or Dylan. Dylan Moon, yeah. Um, but they were both over in that area where he threw the flag, and they're going to call holding on the corner on the edge. Good gain is going to be negated. Ferguson had about a four or five yard gain, maybe even more, and now they mark it backwards to play center zone 43 yard line. It stays first down, 256 left first half. Play center trailing here, 15 6 with the football, first down, 16 to go. Now play center at their own 43. Offensive line waits patiently for the call to get made. Cam Laws, or correction, Ethan Straub, right, Trevin Shirley, left, the receivers. We're gonna, we got to watch our time. Frederick under center, first and long. He will hand off underneath, no, pitches late to Dylan Moon, right side, has Jake Ferguson out in front, gains back to penalty yardage, gets across that original line of scrimmage. Good stick by Wamigo, but Dylan Moon, a great run off the pitch from Blake Frederick at second down and nine. Yeah, he picked up almost half of what we needed there, and it was a great run. He did pay for it on the tackle, but good, good game by Dylan Moon. Call it second down eight. The football is at the Wamigo 48-yard line. Two minutes left, first half. Tigers trailing the Red Raiders 15-6 after the Tigers had taken a 6 nothing lead. Blake Frederick in a quarterback for the injured Cooper Glavin. Hand off underneath. Here is Gunny Mullen again. Logan Mullen takes it inside the 45-yard line, brings up third down. Still about three to go, but the Tigers, a little business working right now against this Red Raiders. Oh, absolutely. On that run, Gunny Mullen, it, was, it looked like he was stopped at the line of scrimmage. He was hit and stopped at the line of scrimmage. He just let that would-be tackler fall to the ground, and then he took off for another five yards. 
Straub, right side, short side of the field. Left is Trevin Shirley. Tigers again working their way through this first half, a minute 15 to go. And we may be taking a timeout because we're taking a long time to get a play call. We're in the five count now. We are in the five count. There we is the No, the penalty flag comes in. We get a timeout first. We have okay. Yep. So timeout to the Tigers. A minute four left. Clay Center trails here, 15-6. You're listening to Tiger Football on 100.9. Download the Ray's Apple Market app today and start saving on the name brands you like. Coupons you download are applied to your purchase at checkout, and deals of the week can be sent to your phone so you don't miss out. Plus, you'll find great quality with certified Angus beef or Smithfield prime pork and homemade rock house salads for mealtime options. Look for savings throughout the store, on your phone, and online with the app. Make your list full of savings from Ray's Apple Market. Back once again here in Wamego, Rocky Downing along with studio engineer Bernie Pancella, Zach Elzinga, Randy Chet Carlson, the place that our Tigers down 15 to 6. You know, dodged a couple of bullets in the first quarter, Chet, then came back, got that touchdown run from Blake Frederick. Things felt really good at that point, early second quarter, and then a couple of weird plays for Wamego. Well, we dodged a couple of bullets, and then we also just manned up and made some stops. You know, and, and you're right. Their only scores are, uh, it's a, it was the strangest looking kickoff return I've ever seen for a True. touchdown. And then a defensive tackle picks up a fumble and runs 60 some yards. That never yeah. happened. And that's their only scores tonight. Now, it's going to be very interesting to watch what the coaches do. There's a minute four to go in the half. It's third and four. We're out in the middle part of the field. This at is the, a big down. At the Red Raider 44 yard line. In motion goes Dylan Moon. And we've got a penalty flag before the play gets uh, going. Uh, and it's procedure against the Tigers. So it was third and four with a minute four to go. Now it's going to be third and nine with a minute three to go. Should be a minute four. Yeah, it should be no time off the clock, but we'll see if they correct that or not. 15-6, to six, Tigers do trail by nine. A couple of scores in for you. Wakefield down 22-0 at halftime to Gossel. And it is... Chapman leading Abilene 14 0. That's a halftime score. Marysville also up 28 0 on Concordia. Halftime score. Here are the Tigers, a minute three away from halftime, down 15 to 6. Third down, nine yards to go. With the football at the Red Raider 44 yard line. Here is Frederick, option play left. Now he's going to tuck it and run it, and we'll get it down near the 42. I said the 44. They were at the 54 on the third down carry. And now a timeout by Wamigo will force the Tigers' hand on whether they punch or try to run another play on fourth and three. I know. And, see, that's where I say it's going to be interesting. We have done okay on a couple of long snaps tonight. Last week we had three right. pretty errant long snaps. Costly long snaps. Yeah. Right. And so it's like, do you go for it on fourth and four, potentially give it up in the middle of the field, and they have a minute to go? Right. Right. Or do you try to nail them, move them back to their end of the field so they have a long field to go, but we risk that long snap? I know what I'd do. <laughs> so tell our listeners, what would you do? I would run a foot. Yeah, I think that would be. Because then you get you got a you chance to pick time up the clock. You, you may get the first down. you got a chance to pick And you don't up. give a chance for another freak play. We've already had two. And if we want to have a freak play in there, why don't we run it for a touchdown? Yeah. You know, we run the ball, and they try to stop us for the short game. We're going to for a touchdown or go up top. Right. I, I, Marty Schottenheimer would It's a lot easier from here to make that call, obviously. Uh, Zach, what would you do? I'd go for it, yeah. What would you call? I'd probably go up top. I like the up top. Of course, Blake hasn't been. That's, a lot of the, that's the other variable. Yeah. You've got a backup quarterback, although quality, but a sophomore backup quarterback that's running your offense right now. Tigers go out. They're not even lined up in any formation that would represent a punt. They are going for it on fourth and three. So Half back pass. Maybe the naked bootleg with the star earlier that worked well. Frederick, hard count maybe. Try to draw him off. Yep. Now he backs away. Will he go back under center and run it? Fourth down three. In motion goes Ferguson. Still the hard count. Nothing yet. Now maybe a timeout, or they go quick. Five seconds. And there is a penalty flag, or do we get the timeout? No. 
the sideline <laughs> says we had the timeout before the delay of game. <laughs> so now they can talk about it all over again, right? The back judge back here is like, dang it, I've been trying to get this call two in a row. They won't let me. Now they do bring the punt team on. So Trevin Shirley will be the punter. The uh, special teams unit was out on the field, and Coach J.D. Lane says, hey, we got time to talk this over, make sure we got everything right, so it brings it back over to the sideline. Uh, 57 seconds remains, 15 to 6. Tigers trail by 9 as we near halftime. Coming up at halftime, by the way, we will hear from Play Center Tiger senior Luke Coppice. I will tell you guys, Luke, not playing much defense tonight. He was a starter on both sides. He is a need that he, he may not, maybe shouldn't be playing. It's not that it's going to uh, injure it more, but the pain he's going through is pretty intense. Oh, yeah. But he's gutting it out as a senior and on the offensive line. But he doesn't talk about that. We talk about his dog. Cool. He may become the bloodhound. He's got a couple of bloodhounds we'll talk about. Cool. And he's part of our halftime show. And also, uh, Coach Robert Moran with the uh, Tiger volleyball team joins us. That's all coming up at the halftime break. Right now, it's fourth and three. The Tigers will line up to punt it. Trevin Shirley stands at his own 47-yard line. One receiver back to receive that's better for Wamiga. Snap, a good one. The kick is away. Line drive kick bounces at the 20. Down to the 15, picked up by Vetter. Return to the left side. Now starts it back toward the middle. A little shake and bake move. Still on his feet to the 20. Now a penalty flag comes in late with 43 seconds remaining. Wamiga will take over the football. Well, to start with, it could be at around the 30, but there's a penalty flag down. I think it's probably in the area of holding or a block in the back. The way he was darting around there, it could be a block in the back because he was reversing field yeah, quite a bit. Good. I hope it's against it them regardless. Think uh, fast, and it's against the Tigers. I couldn't be more wrong, could I? Uh, and we couldn't tell from that side of the field. It is against Clay Center. And well, so the Red Raiders will take over at their own. Is that where they mark it too? They are taking over within a few yards of where we would have given up the ball right. anyway if we wouldn't have made it running the ball. 43 seconds left. While Migo starts from their own 37-yard line. They lead 15-6 here in the second quarter. Cooper, handoff better, trying to get outside, gets a good block. To the outside, Jake Ferguson and Cam Osborne. The can slam again, put me down. Ferguson turned him back inside, and Osborne made the tackle. Yeah, <laughs> Ferguson kind of overran the play a little bit, right. but by doing so, he turned him inside. But Osborne, what a tackle. That's the tackle I've been wanting to see for a long time. Timeout taken now by Wamigo. Let's break as well. You're listening to Tiger Football on 100.9. Putting the highest quality food on the world's dinner table starts with you providing high quality feed to your livestock. Central Valley Ag Feed Meal Manager Dean Nigren is proud to help. Working with farmers and cattlemen really gives you a sense of pride. It's feeding the world. TVA Business Process Manager James Krakemeyer says customers know they can depend on their co-op. If they don't succeed in what they're doing, we can't succeed as a co-op either. You and Central Valley Ag, growing agriculture together. Second down short now for Wamigo. 24 seconds left in this first half of play. Coming up this weekend, tomorrow, Wildcat Saturday. It is K-State hosting Texas San Antonio. 3 o'clock kickoff, 1 o'clock your free game. And an impressive start for the Chiefs at the Chargers last weekend. Absolutely. They go on the road again this weekend to Pittsburgh and face the Steelers at noon. Pregame is at 11. Okay, so as weird as this has, has been so far tonight, that play Wamigo just ran was their first offensive play in the second quarter, and they lead 15-6. It's been kind of wacky. Here's a handoff to Vetter left side, chased by Brumfield. Now it gets to the outside. It's going to be gathered by Blake Frederick and company and driven out of bounds with now 15 seconds left in this half. I haven't seen anybody able to block Blake Frederick on the corner. I agree. He fights through it and makes the tackle. No, he's been impressive this year. And really, last week was this. We called him in week one, but last week it seemed like he was the last line of defense. Here's Cooper downfield. Sacks Ryder with a catch. 
with eight seconds remaining, when Juanigo went fast, the Tigers didn't seem to be prepared for that pace. No. And Zach Ryder sliding in for the catch, eight seconds remaining. Juanigo out of timeout, so they've got to go quick. Let's we'll see if they spike it. No, they will run a play. Cooper's going to run it. This may be the last play of the first half. Down to three seconds. Tigers make the tackle, and that will end the first half of play. Wow. 15-6, Tigers trail as we head to halftime. Farming and ranching isn't just your livelihood, it's your life. No one understands that better than Farm Bureau Financial Services. As the number one farm insurer in Kansas, we offer comprehensive coverage that protects your farm and ranch, machinery, livestock, and so much more. We make it simple to get customized coverage in one policy with one premium and one deductible when you need it most. Contact Farm Bureau agents Justin Padman and Michael Hodges in Clay Center to learn more about smarter insurance for agriculture. Farm Bureau Property and Casualty Insurance Company, Western Agricultural insurance company. Are you in need of physical, occupational, or speech therapy? At Clay County Medical Center, we have board-certified, highly trained medical providers to meet those needs. When you visit, we'll complete an evaluation and develop a customized treatment plan for you. Illness or injury, we can help make your life more active and enjoyable. We are certified in LSVT Big, LSVT Loud, and will soon be ASTEM certified for advanced soft tissue therapy. Clay County Medical Center, our family carrying for yours. With nearly 100 years of proven innovation in specialty chemicals and ingredients, Wilbur Ellis offers custom products and solutions to help you thrive. They work continually to be an indispensable partner in every facet of your agribusiness, from developing a customized program for your specific soil type to supplying the right seed and crop protection products. Wilbur Ellis has you covered. It's time to plan your fall fertilizing program, so contact the agronomy professionals at Wilbur Ellis. To solve the big challenges of tomorrow, start with simple steps today. I'm Jim Gearham with Midwest Regional Agency Farmers Union Insurance, and I can help walk you through the variety of coverage you need. Whether you want to protect your business, livestock, crops, your home and vehicles, or protect your family from the unexpected, I have a range of policies we can look at. We provide our customers with excellent service and have respect and loyalty to the people in our community. Stop by and see me. Jim Gearhan at Midwest Regional Agency in Clay Center. Halftime is here. The Clay Center Tigers down 15-6 after a 6 nothing lead. Uh, we talked about the wacky first quarter. I mean, Lomigo scores on a 67-yard touchdown in the second quarter. First down, was Lomigo should have scored a couple times, it seemed like. And the Tiger defense stepped up and made plays. And then Blake Frederick takes it in from 10 yards out. Dawson Humphrey, the big pass to Trevin Shirley. They had things working kind of all over the field. Frederick takes it in. You're up 6 nothing, And then the ensuing kickoff, 60-some yards on a kind of a weird drop. It stayed on the sideline, didn't go out of bounds. Everybody kind of maybe stood up for a second. Ty Cooper did, yeah. and he took off. Right. <laughs> and then uh, the Tigers turn it over when uh, Cooper Glavin, who was knocked out of the game on the play, blindsided, lost the football, and a defensive lineman scoops and scores from 60-some yards. So two kind of weird plays for Wamigo. And then the second quarter, the Tigers... Kind of moved it, didn't really play poorly, just you got your back against the wall a little bit, and eventually it's a 15 to 6 halftime score. Oddest number we can talk about, Zach, is the total offense for Omega. It's almost nothing. Yeah, it was a very bizarre first half. I'd say if you looked at the numbers, you think the score would be reversed to 176 yards for Clay Center to 70 for Marysville. And 30 of that was like in the last minute and a half, right? 30 was in that last possession there and time of possession Omega's only got six or seven minutes and play centers have it the rest of the game. Turnovers are always a, something you've got to take a look at and it's a big difference and specialty. Well it is and then by the same token we could be down more we gave them the ball on the three yard line. Right. We gave them the ball on the three yard line and we stopped them. We gave them the ball what on the 25 yard line. Or they had it fourth and 11 at our 25 and we took it back over. Yeah, and so we we stepped up and made a couple of stops there, or it'd be crazy. But, yeah, their two scores don't enter into those those stats you're talking about. And, and they didn't run a play of offense until there was about 40 seconds to go in the half. Right. In, I mean, in the second quarter. Strange first half of play. The Tigers down 15-6. to six. I need to get you to our halftime interviews coming up. We have Luke Coppice on the way. We have Coach Robert Moran. We'll come back and look more at numbers and this first half 
But right now, let's send you back for this halftime report. The lawn and garden season isn't over when the weather gets cooler. This is the best time to prepare your yard for fall and winter. Hometown Lumber and Hardware has the grass seed, fertilizer, garden hoses, and sprinklers you need for a healthy, hardy lawn. They also have rental equipment to make planting new seed and spreading fertilizer easier. See about renting overseeders, lawn spreaders for an even application, and tillers to aerate the soil. Come next spring, your lawns will flourish. Visit Hometown Lumber and Hardware in Marysville. Joined by one of the Tiger seniors, Luke Coppice, man on the front line on both offense and defense. And uh, Luke, as we get into game number three, let's talk about how quickly things have gone for you guys. I know disappointing losses in week one against Dabbling, last week against Marysville, and now you get another league opponent in this district, uh, the Wamigo Red Raiders. What do you take out of the game that are positives. I know the coaches have talked about things that you got to work on, but they also point out things that went well and there were highlights for you guys. But what are some of the things you you feel good about in the first two games? That we've got guys giving effort and trying their best on every play, even though they may not know exactly what they're doing. Yeah, that's a great point. And you know, you're a senior and we've talked with coach about this and you talked about young guys. You do have freshmen, sophomores, juniors and you seven seniors on the field, but even for you you could say a little inexperienced on a varsity field. What was the first snap, the first game or the den when everything gets going and now you're a, you're a part of everything? It was fun. It was completely a step up from what I've ever experienced. And how about Harley Night? You know, you've walked through that before, but you're leading people through there now. Leading people and being a part of the first guys through that is really fun. It, that's a great night, even though we lost. Talk about what's coming up this week with uh, the Wamego Red Raiders. Uh, what do you know about them? I'm sure you guys have got some, some game plans together. They like to spread the ball around, and they will just try to get the ball to everyone and be outside. You go on the road for the first time, so new experience there for this team uh, this season. As you get ready for the road trips, uh, we do a little thing called Tiger Talk. I'm not sure if you've watched us before or not. Coach Brown's been hit on the spot a few times. So when you're heading on the road, we've talked about music before, but who is the guy, the Tiger football team, that's going to be the DJ on the bus trip? Um, probably either Cooper Glavin or Blake Frederick. I could almost have guessed that, I think, from outside looking in. Okay, favorite actor or actress? Do you have a favorite that you have to see all their movies? No, I do not. Not really? And do you have a pet? And if you do, what is it? What's its name? I have three dogs. Their names are Ruby, Rosie, and Hank. What kind of dogs? The Rosie is a black lab, and Hank and Ruby are bloodhounds. Very good. Luke, go get them this weekend. On Friday night, the Tigers travel on the road for the first time this year to Wamigo. Welcome to this subway ad for the Italian collection. How would you like it? I'll take a rallying cry, please. Coming right up. Champions of flavor! Ahead lies a meaty, savory, and spicy trio of Italian subs. But let not these European flavors overpower you. For tonight we dance on the thrones of spicy Italian, Italian BMT, and Turkey Italiano Melt. Go forth to Subway and make it what you want. Limited time at participating shops joined by the head coach of the Lady Tiger Volleyball Program, Robert Moran. And, uh, Coach, first off, thanks for letting us intrude on your practice oh, absolutely. time. absolutely. Anytime. I, uh, anytime we can kind of get the word out about our volleyball team and the, the good things that we're doing, we like to do that. So I appreciate you coming up here to do this. Absolutely. Let's take a little look into what the season's been like for you guys so far. You've had quite a bit under your belt already. Just coming off of a fourth place finish at Riley County. Uh, I guess let's talk, start there on Saturday. Okay. Uh, well, we started off the day really well. We got off to a 2-0 start, um, beat Mission Valley and um, uh, uh, Jefferson County North, and I uh, thought we played pretty well through that, throughout that those two matches. Um, the third set in pool play, we played Riley County and, and uh, we kind of really had a bad set, the second set there, and, and just didn't couldn't get much going and got into a rut, and so that was, that was disappointing. Um, but you know, advanced out of pool play, so that was we, th we thought we still got an opportunity. Played a pretty tough Holton uh, team in the semis, and, and they're they're good regardless. So, uh, but then we did get an opportunity to play uh, Riley County in the third fourth place game, and uh, just came up short in that third set. But I felt like probably the best volleyball we played all day was in that last uh, that last match, and um, had opportunities there, but just kind of let them slip away and made a few too many errors. I know you look at the score in the the first matchup with Riley County, and as you said, just 
lackluster. Yep. Uh, and then you go up against them in the third place match, and as you said, much, much closer. The one thing I'm hearing about your team, and we'll get some opportunities to cover you on the air before the season's over and before the postseason, but is a defensive-minded team, a scrambling team, they will not give up on a point. Right, and that's... Uh... <laughs> More of that's out of necessity than anything, because if you watch us walk out on the court, uh, we're not very tall. Um, we will probably never this year uh, be the bigger team um, just because of our size. I mean, our biggest person we trot out there is probably uh, Janae Shivers, who's 5'8", and uh, so we have to be, and we, we knew that from the beginning, you know, and it's it's one of those things, uh, there's nothing we can do about it, so we, we say, okay, we got to make our, our trademark has got to be our defense and our hustle, and, and they bought into that, and uh, when we do that, we can be tough to beat, because we can be that, I've, I've played those teams before uh, when we've had really good teams that uh, that uh, just don't let that ball hit the floor, and they can be frustrating, and that's kind of what we built ourselves around, is saying, hey, we're going to frustrate that team until they make a mistake, and uh, they bought into that, and for the most part, played pretty well with that philosophy. Um, you know, we, we still need to tweak a few things, but I think if uh, if we can keep that as our constant, that, uh, that, that we'll be pretty good this year. Let's talk about this weekend, Rossville. Uh, you go on the road once again on Saturday. That's always a, a tough tournament. It's a very tough tournament. Um, you know, I, that, that's one of the tournaments of the ones that we that we regularly play in that we've never won. And um, it, it'll be tough again this year. We've got uh, we start off the day with Holton, who we who we saw last week already. So we've got them. We've got a traditionally tough Abilene program. Um, we got to play uh, Osage City. I don't know as much about them. And then the host team Rossville. So it shapes up to be a pretty tough pool, but also one that that if we can get on a run, I feel like we can have some success. You know, things are changing in classifications and in playoff setups, and it kind of give the viewers an idea. What has really changed for you guys? It's, it's confusing because different sports are different ways. Yeah, and, yeah, and it's it's uh, you know it's still up in the air for us too. It's it, we're about a you know probably two or three weeks away from him knowing exactly where we're going to fit in. I mean, we based on enrollment figures that we've looked at in the past, we could be a big three A or a small four A, and that could drastically change um, what our postseason looks at looks like. Because uh, you know if we're in the four A, we're in with thirty six teams, and that sub states kind of get configured a little differently. Um, if we're in three A, we're sixty four teams. So then you're back to your traditional eight, eight team substates that, that last a little bit longer. Um, and then of course, not only is the format different between those two, but the mix of teams that you could potentially end up with could be totally different than what we're used to. So, you know, right now I'm I'm just as you know up in the air about it as you are because I, we don't know yet. We have we won't know for a couple weeks. So it's quite a learning curve for all the sports this year. It really is a big change. Okay, Tiger talk real quickly and I'll let you get to these girls and start working. Um, when you guys are on a bus trip. Who is the one player that's going to play DJ on that bus trip? Uh, my guess would be Erin Hamill. She's probably back there controlling the, the music the most. Um, between her and Haley Franson, um, I would say probably those two. Uh, um, and, they, and they don't do too bad. Every once in a while, I got to, like the other day, I told them, if, if you win a tournament, you get to play the music at practice. If I win the tournament, I get to play the music. And uh, so that day, I picked Neil Diamonds, and they weren't too happy with that. So most of them didn't even know who he was. <laughs> really fired up there, Coach, yeah. I can imagine. Uh, favorite actor or actress? Do you have a, one that they have a movie you just have to see? That I like? Um, oh, gosh. I don't um, you know, I've always liked Kevin Costner. I've liked, liked his movies, and, and you know, if, if he's in a movie, I usually look to see that. Uh, that'd probably be one that comes to mind right off the bat. Um, I'm, I'm more like an action-adventure style movie person, so, yeah. And final question, if you have a pet, what kind of pet is it, and what's its name? I don't have a pet right now, but if I'm going to have a pet, it's going to be a dog. So, Any and, breed in particular? Uh, boxers. I'm, I've, I've had a couple boxers, and I've always enjoyed that breed. Uh, the last one I had, I had a boxer. Uh, his name was Luke. And uh, so, yeah, I'd, I'd go with another boxer at some point. Very good. Coach, we really do appreciate it. Good luck this weekend. All right, thanks a lot. You'll be amazed at what you can save when you use the Ray's Apple Market app. Browse the grocery and household items that have digital coupons or scan items in store to see if there's a coupon available. Deals of the week and reward points are also additional ways to save money. Plus, you'll find outstanding quality in the meat department with certified Angus beef and Smithfield prime pork. You're also going to like the selection of home baked goods. Quality you can taste and savings that add up at Ray's Apple Market. Agmark LLC announces their 2018 early corn program. The drying charges will be discounted for corn delivered to the Concordia Terminal between now and September 30th. The discounted drying only applies at time of delivery and it must be delivered to the Concordia Terminal and applied to a contract. 
please feel free to contact one of their merchandisers for specific details on the Early Corn Program. Call Agmark toll-free at 888-848-9979 or visit their website at agmarkllc.com. Luggage, camera, tickets, cell phone, visa travel card. The family is packed and ready to enjoy a fabulous vacation. By taking along the Visa Travel Card from the Citizens National Bank, you won't have to worry about extra cash. It's more secure than using your debit card and much safer than carrying cash. When preparing for your next getaway, make sure you have the Visa Travel Card on your list. The Citizens National Bank, Downtown Clay Center. Stop by for more information about the Visa Travel Card. Member FDIC. The Specialty Clinic at Clay County Medical Center offers access to over 20 specialized medical providers for general surgery, orthopedics, ENT, dermatology, and many more. Our team of specialists are able to see you for almost any medical condition. With our convenient location at Clay Center, there's no need to travel an hour or more to see a specialist. For more information, visit ccmcks.org or call 632-2144. Clay County Medical Center. Our family. Carry for yours. Back once again at halftime, Clay Center Tigers, Wamigo Red Raiders back on the field getting set to go. And Tigers right now see a first half that there were things to feel good about. And there was just some things that got away. Two big plays, two weird plays got away from them. The two weird plays that got away from them were the two scores, is right. what you're referring to. Um, we made big plays on defense after we gave some mistakes up, you know, and then we rebounded and made some big stops. We made a stop on the one-yard line. Right. We, you know, we made a stop inside the 25 another time. We um, we had a lot of moments of greatness out there. That's why we're only down by one touchdown, you know, because they didn't score on offense. <laughs> no, not at all. They're ahead 15-6, to six and their offense hasn't scored yet. You know, they scored on a kick return, and a defensive lineman got a defensive lineman's dream, right? You know, and so it's it's just crazy. And like Zach said uh, a little bit ago, we have 176 yards; they have 71 yards, right? You know, and so we have a lot to feel good about. The only thing I'm concerned about right now is, you know, when you go to the locker room, you want to have momentum. We had momentum through most of that second quarter. But they closed out with some momentum. So we had to, we have to find a way to get that back when we come out and start this third quarter. Right. Zach, you, as Chad said, you mentioned it. If you looked at the numbers, you would think the scores would be flip-flopped, 176 to 73 or whatever the yards are. But to add on to that, while Nego's offense has struggled, you brought up a number to us during halftime on third down and fourth down conversions. Yeah, they're uh, 0 for 3 on third down, 0 for 2 on fourth down. Both those fourth downs that we had our backs up against the wall and we were able to come up with some big stops. That, yeah, that was inside the 1 and inside the 25, and you, that was all first quarter, and you come away with the football, and then you take the lead, and then those two kind of wacky plays happen, and you lose your quarterback. I will say this, uh, Cooper Glavin, we know how talented that kid is. Right. We love watching him play, right. but the offense, I thought, maybe – Across the board, not Blake Frederick necessarily. He played well at quarterback, but across the board, it seemed like they raised their energy when he went out. Well, you could, that's an opportunity to lose all your momentum, and we did. Right. You know, that, right. that's the thing there is we kept our momentum on offense. We kept moving the ball. We kept moving the chains. We kept making penalties and driving ourselves backwards and then, <laughs> then getting it back, you know. And, and so, you know, you just gnash your teeth on some of those penalties because some of them are ridiculous. But, by the same token, we stayed in it. We kept ourselves in the game. Um, they didn't run a snap on offense, Wamigo, until there was 40-some seconds to go in the half. And they did get a little bit. They were able to go to the locker room with some offensive momentum. Right. Even though, But all of their stats are among three guys. Number one, Cooper, the quarterback. Number two, Vetter, the running back. And number six, Sack Ryder, Sack Ryder the receiver. Yep. Right. Mean, you're right. And, and his catch didn't count. But he's been a big part of this game. He has been, yeah, without a doubt. Uh, the Tigers, again, trail 15-6. to six. We're at the halftime break, but about set to go for this second half. Again, we'll set the table for what's coming up. Last week on the air, we were talking about this being district play. Well, yeah. it's it's a six-team district, so week four is when that begins. This is the final regular season game of the year. Wamingo is in Clay Center's class, 3A but they are in a different district toward the east. 
Clay Center goes to uh, further west, Heston, Halstead, Chapman, Smoky Valley, Clay Center. So that lines up their district. But it is a unique setup this year for all the things that are changing and all the classification. I'll add to the the, the 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 mess, if you will. I think there's some good things that they've done, and I think that I think it's a good decision to go the direction they have for volleyball. You heard Coach Robert yeah. Moran at halftime. Yeah. They don't even know what class they're in yet. That's crazy. Until Sept- until Thursday of next week, September 20th. Isn't that wild? It's crazy. So they don't even know what class they're going to compete against or how their playoff will be set up. And a lot of us still want to flash back to because we were in the three or the fourteen district for so long, right? Where two teams would advance. Now we're a six-team district and four, four teams, teams advance. advance. Exactly. Trevin Shirley set to kick it off. The Tasty Pastry second half kickoff as Wamego has two receivers back inside their own 15-yard line. Trevin Shirley, line drive kicks, going to be scooped up at the 20. Return by Vetter out to the 30-yard line. Gets a block, now spins off a tackle to the 38. He's brought down by Logan Mullen, but a good return by Tabor Vetter and gives Wamego field position at their own 39-yard line. Logan Mullen hit him. He stopped him in his track. That was because Vetter, Vetter's a dangerous runner, and he was starting to skate through the Tiger defense there, or the re, re, kick, kick return team a little bit. Logan Mullen met him hard. Jacob Ludwig in defensively out on that left side of the defensive line. Trevin Shirley to the right side. Then you have Dalton Brumfield, Logan McDonald, Keegan McDonald in the middle. Ty Cooper, the quarterback. Vetter, handoff, chase to the outside left. Now gets off a block and is going to be tackled by Jake Ferguson. He does take it for a gain of about four, second down and six. What a great tackle in the open field by Jake Ferguson. We've been we've been saying that so much with number twelve, right? Um, Blake Frederick, but that was just picturesque there by Jake Ferguson. Ethan Straub, Cam Osborne are your corners right now. Inside linebackers Dylan Boo, Dawson Humphrey. Here is Cooper keeping himself to the middle. Now gets off a block. He's got some room to run to the 50, breaking free to the 30, to the 25, 15, 10, 5. No flags down, and Wamigo has punched it in. They now lead it 21-6. to six. A touchdown run of 60. Every scoring play for Wamigo. This is the first from the offensive outset, but special teams, defense scoop and score, quarterback keep, all 60-plus yards. Oh, I know, and we had pressure on him in the backfield. We couldn't quite get on him, though. And once he got a little crease, and we talked about it when he ran down that sideline on the kick return earlier, boy, he shows a lot of speed, and he just pulled away from everybody. So it will be Wamego going up 21-6. to 11-14 to work here in this third period. Watson on for the extra point try. Snap is there. The hold is down. The kick is up, and it is good this time. While Nego leads it 22-6, to 11-14 to work. We're in the third. Tiger football continues in a moment. It's the start of another school year, which means taking stock of your kids' growth. Do they need bigger clothes, bigger backpacks, bigger internet speeds? Help equip them for success with the speed they need. Switch to Twin Valley Pulse today to keep up with your growing family and increased need for speed. Call 800-515-3311 now to get your first two months free. Service availability and speed will depend on location. Some restrictions apply. Call for details. Formerly serving you as crop production services, your Nutrient Ag Solutions retailer is always standing by. And the same faces you've relied on for years are now more capable than ever no matter what comes your way. We're more than an unwavering partner. We're the first choice in the field to help you get the most out of yours. Our commitment is to deliver high quality products and service and our customer focused teams will meet your crop nutrition needs efficiently and on time. Visit NutrientAgSolutions.com to learn more. Tigers will get the football back, but boy, Wamego comes out and strikes early. And Chad, you said it, and nearly doubled their offensive output on that one play. Well, they did, and on that possession, you know, they they almost doubled their offensive stats for the night. Tigers get the football back. Here's the kick from Wamego. Back to receive. Sincere Sanders is going to catch him to the line, drive at the 12-yard line. There's 20-25 out near the 30. Tries to squeak through his tackle, unable to do so. Tigers will take over at their own 30-yard line. I want to go back to the first half. We had a huge hit. You you erupted. I erupted. Cam the slam 
uh, Cam Osborne had a huge time hit, and it's our Hundley's Garage big hitter of the game. This is a big time tackle. It was. Jake Ferguson turned him inside. Cam closed on it and just drove him sideways, drilled him into the ground. It was a beautiful tackle. And uh, Coach Brandon Pigorish would have been very proud, I think, of uh, him taking right to his back. Two he may have got the stick right there. Yeah. yeah. Might have got back points. I'm thinking back points, and he might have stuck it. Uh, the Tigers, we'd have a timeout on the field. Again, our big, uh, Hundley's Garage big hitter of the game, Cam Osborne. Trevin Shirley down right now for the Tigers. Let's take a timeout. We'll bring you back to Amigo after this. He could go all the way. You know what season is, boss man? Football season? Yep, my Huskers and your Wildcats are taking the field. And don't forget about our Clay Center Tigers. They're back in action. That's right. They've been busting their tails. Union State Bank supports all athletes and students busting their tails in this new season. Go get them Tigers from Union State Bank. Member FDIC. Hey, football fans. This is State Farm Agent Dave Forgerding, thanking you for your support of my local business. Because of your support from my State Farm Agency, we're able to give back on the sponsorship, the State Farm Fishing Derby, the State Farm Community Appreciation Day at the Center Pool, and the USD 379 Staff School Year Kickoff. We appreciate your business. Visit ClayCenterInsurance.com for a quote or find us on Facebook. That's ClayCenterInsurance.com. Go Tigers! Well, the Tigers do have an injured player down. It's Cam Osborne, number six, not number 16. And Cam is being helped off by Coach Ted Brown and Brad Pyle with him, I think, or Coach Ben Last, excuse me, all out checking on him, and he's not putting any weight on his right leg. So we just talked about the Cam Slam with the big tackle and the big hit of the first half, and, boy, he is really not putting anything on that right leg. So obviously very... Very much pain he's dealing with right now. Tigers trail here 22 to 6, just underway in the second half as Ty Cooper got free for a quarterback keep. A little read option. They run that often. And he got to the outside down the sideline and able to plow through. So Cam, of course, coming out as a senior this year, been a huge part of what this team has done. He didn't play last year. I remember talking with him. He said, I'll be out next year. And he's already done some great things, but right now being helped to the sideline, and he's hate to see that. Well, we we wish him the best. We've we've all been around a lot of injuries, and this one, from this point, it doesn't look very good. No, it does not. So we'll just have to wait and see, obviously, on where that goes. Blake Frederick is in a quarterback. Tigers also have Cooper Glavin out. He went out in the first half when he was blindsided trying to Pass player, the handoff underneath, just no room to run for the Tigers. So, play center short handed tonight, to say the least. The run by Dawson Humphrey hit right at the line of scrimmage, maybe gets a yard out of the play. Second down nine, football from the Tiger 31 yard line. Third quarter action, 10 47 to work. Play center trails here 22 to 6. He's in Straub to the right side. Trevin Shirley to the left, both tight toward the line of scrimmage. Jake Ferguson, Dylan Moon, your wingbacks, Humphrey the fullback, and again, Blake Frederick in at quarterback under center. Blake spins, pitches left for Ferguson, but we have a procedure penalty against the Tigers. So they'll whistle this dead and bring him back five yards. Tigers having a little trouble regrouping at this point. You know, there's been a lot of distractions. The big run by Wamigo to to break that touchdown, and then an, uh, an injury with one of our players that goes both ways. No kidding, you know, and uh, a senior, you know, and and that was a pretty long injury timeout, right? And so we're coming out, and we're just having trouble finding our rhythm again. Second down, 14, 10, 11 to work. We're in the third. Straub goes wide left to the wide side of the field. Surely is to that. Short side, tight on the line. Blake Frederick under center. Second long. Hand off left side, Humphrey. Dawson trying to get outside. Now he's going to be attacked and taken down right at the line of scrimmage. Nowhere to go inside the tackles. Tried to break it out to the left. 
He does get maybe three yards, but it's third down, still 11 to go. That's about as far out as our fullbacks can. Yeah, he was way out there on the edge, and they got him at the line of scrimmage. Third down, 11. Tigers trailing here, 22 to 6. Nine and a half to work. We're in the third. Play center. Split Simon Lee off to the right side. Third down, 11 to go. Frederick puts Moon in motion. Hand off. Now it's going to be Frederick keeping this. If Juanmigo Red Raiders eat this up, and we'll send him backwards. Just know where to go. It's fourth down. The Tigers will be forced to punt. Frederick, a little slow to get up after the tackle. Trying to work his, his right leg. Now he is up and able to walk off under his own accord. Trevin Shirley back to punt. Stands at his own 15-yard line. 8.37 and ticking third quarter. Tigers trail 22-6. Surely to punt it. Snap on its way. Is there. Kick. Pooch right side. Lands at the 48 of Walmigo and out of bounds at around the 45 yard line. That's where Walmigo will take over, leading 22 to 6 here in the third. Well, when Walmigo has been on offense tonight, they've usually had pretty good field position, and that starts for him again on this possession. Time and time again, yeah. They forced the Tigers to punt from deep. They've had a couple of turnovers that allowed them to have short fields. Actually, first quarter, the Tigers denied those short fields and got the football back. But while Migos had a kickoff return in the second, the defensive lineman from 60-plus yards in the second, and then the Ty Cooper run here in the early third. Here's Vetter. He breaks through to the 45 of play center. Finally brought down by Ethan Straw, but it's going to be first and 10 yardage for the Red Raiders. They are running downhill right now. They really are. They're, they're finding their rhythm. We, we talked about how we had a rhythm and lost it. Can't get it back. They're able to find theirs. Here's Cooper. Hand off better again through the line of scrimmage. Falls forward. A penalty flag near the tackle. This could be a hold. Could be something on the defense. It's right in the middle of the, uh, the pack as better fell forward for about a gain of three. I think officials meeting in the backfield, holding, holding against the Red Raiders, and the Tigers can take that penalty. So Clay Center shorthanded with the injuries to Cooper Glavin, the quarterback. He has not been able to come back in. Blake Fredericks doing good work there, but that also hurts your defense because now you got to shuffle people around. Then Cam Osborne goes down. He goes on both sides. But just on our defense alone, we're, we're out right now. Cooper Glavin, Blake Fredericks not playing D, and Cam Osborne. Right. Here is Cooper for Wamiga to better. Bounces outside. Now cuts against the green and falls forward to the 45-yard line, maybe the 46. It'll be second down, 11 to go for Wamigo. Lane Muscle in on the play that time, and Jacob Ludwig as well. And the Tigers, you know, with that holding penalty, that gives them an opportunity to get a stop on defense here. Made a little bit of a stop on that run at second and 11. Here's Ty Cooper for Wamigo. Vetter got by one tackle, now to the outside. Jake Ferguson makes wow. the play. The Daredevil, there's a penalty flag behind the play, and they came from a long ways out from two different officials, so we'll see what this call is. See if it's the same call. I'm, I'm thinking it is. I mean, they threw them in the same holding. spot. Well, there you go. Boy, what a tackle by Jake Ferguson. He doesn't make the play. Better had some room to run. And apparently it was because of the hole. <laughs> because that was right on that corner. Right. So they will take the penalty yardage. Backs them into Wamigo's end of the field. Red Raiders from their own 47-yard line. Now second down 20. Seven and a half to work. We're in the third. Clock goes back into motion as the Red Raiders snap it from the gun. Cooper looking to pass, fires across the middle, has a receiver, that's better. And he will dance back in bounds, now loses the football, dives back on it, and the Tigers may have it. We do. I think we do. 
have not seen a signal, but they, yes, Tiger football. The Tigers come back up with it. Sincere Sanders may have had that. I did not see anyone come up with the football, but I saw the officials mark it dead, and play center's got it back. I saw Dylan Moon take off for the other sideline just knowing we had the ball, but I couldn't find it out there. 7-14 to work, third quarter. Tigers have the football back, down 22-6. to Blake Frederick at quarterback. Logan Mullen, now the fullback behind him. Dylan Moon, Jake Ferguson, your two wingbacks. Trevin Shirley, wide left. Straub right, in motion Moon. Frederick rolls left, wanting to pass. Trying to square it up, he's being chased. Now near the sideline, has to tuck it and run it. Two defenders drive him down at the line of scrimmage. He does get keep from losing yardage, but it'll be second down at 10. I was not looking downfield, but I don't think Frederick had a chance to square his shoulders and make a throw. He was rolling left. He was rolling left, but he had two guys in his face. He was just running for his life and running for the sideline and running. He he just got back to the line of scrimmage. Second down 10. Keegan McDonald, the center. Blake Frederick, handoff underneath. Logan Mullen. And he's going to be hit near the line of scrimmage. Short yardage play. And never went down, but just had nowhere to go and a big crowd inside. Third down, eight yards to go. A gain of two for Gunny. Down to 6-10 to work third period. Tigers football. Luke Coppice, Logan McDonald, the tackles. Dalton Brumfield. I know as the guard. Go ahead. I know it's not as hot on the field as it is up in this box. Right. But I'm seeing fatigue on both sides of the ball already. Here's Frederick. Pitch out wide left to Ferguson. Catches, gets a block, and back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Dylan Moon made one heck of a block, or Ferguson may have been lit up in the backfield deep. It's a good thing Ferguson's tall. That that pitch had some height on it. Yeah, you know, it, it did. Was, it was moving away from him, and he had to work to pull in that pitch, and uh, then fought himself, fought his way back to the to the line of scrimmage. Five seventeen to go, third quarter. Tigers forced to punt it. Fourth down and eight. Trevin Shirley stands at his own forty yard line. And while Migos two return men are their quarterback and their running back, snap a good one, kick. Taken at the 18-yard line. This is going to be Cooper. And he slips by one tackler. Now reverses field to the outside right. He's got some room near the midfield stripe. He is racing to the 30, 25. High step in his way and uh, dragged finally down by Trevin Shirley. Guamiga will have it first down in goal inside the section. They'll mark him down to the 15. Maybe he stepped out of bounds even near the 20. But, man. This guy has got some speed. He's got some wheels, and when he gets on that sideline, he just looks like a world-class sprinter the way he strides out. All right. right. He's smooth runner. Ty Cooper, 163-pound senior, and he sets up Wamiga with a short field at 446 to work here in the third. Red Raiders lead it 22-6. to six. Tigers forced the turnover to get it back, but eventually had to punt it away. Cooper from the gun with Vetter in the backfield with him. He has a receiver wide right and two left. Vetter underneath. Now cuts it back to the 10 and is going to be taken down inside the 10-yard line. To give, I mentioned earlier before the game that when they were doing the anthem, we were getting ready with the captains out there, that it looked like Flamingo had about three times as many players as the Tigers on the line. Right now, the offense is on the field. There's a full set of defensive players watching video on the Wamigo Red Raiders sideline. I know, that's crazy. (laughs) They run full units each way on, I mean, almost, with the exception of a few players. We have a timeout now taken by Wamigo. 4.30 left, third quarter, Tigers trail 22-6 when we come back. 
Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. Did you know Patterson's Health Mart Pharmacy delivers? That's right. Patterson understands that for many people, the lack of mobility and transportation make it very difficult to get their necessary prescriptions. That's why Patterson's make daily deliveries Monday through Friday to Clyde, Clifton, Lynn, Wakefield, and Leonardville, as well as Clay Center. You can even get same-day deliveries if you call before noon. Red Raiders take the timeout. They lead 22 to 6. They have it first down and goal at the nine yard line of the Tigers. Here's Cooper to better. Running left side, trying to turn the corner near the pylon. Now he cuts it back to the goal line. He is in for another Red Raider touchdown. Taver better. The rock free transfer takes it in and puts the Red Raiders up now 28 to 6. And another Tiger down in the field right now. Yeah, I didn't see who it was, but he was in on the tackle of Vetter right at the goal line. Tigers down 30-6. to There'll be an extra point try coming for the Red Raiders, and we have an injury timeout on the field. Let's break here as well. We're on the way from Wamego after this. Robbins Motor Company of Manhattan is a proud supporter of Tiger football. It's time for their Ram Power Days. Get to Robbins Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, and Fiat. Come test drive the all-new 2019 Ram truck, the longest-lasting truck in America, now priced to move with Ram Power Days discounts and 0% for 72 months. Now is the time to buy. See their complete inventory online at RobbinsMotors.com or come visit them on West Anderson in Manhattan. Good luck, Tigers. With nearly 100 years of proven innovation and specialty chemicals and ingredients, Wilbur Ellis offers custom products and solutions to help you thrive. They work continually to be an indispensable partner in every facet of your agribusiness. From developing a customized program for your specific soil type to supplying the right seed and crop protection products, Wilbur Ellis has you covered. It's time to plan your fall fertilizing program, so contact the agronomy professionals at Wilbur Ellis. There is an injury timeout going on right now. Ethan Straub, I think it's a cramp. They're really working on his left calf. And, Chad, I guess back to your point a minute ago when we were talking about it's not as hot maybe on the field as it is in this booth. It's a sauna up here, but uh, it is a hot night of weather for these players to deal with. And uh, I think that's what Ethan Straub is. They're trying to work him through right now. So there is a, a break in play. Let's look at a little bit of what we have for the Tigers as far as our awards this evening, we had the Hundley's Garage Big Hitter earlier for Cam Osborne, and, and Cam went out with an injury. We've not seen him return to the field. We know Cooper Glavin went out earlier as well. Uh, the Catalyst Design and Graphics catch of the game, big-time play first half, Cooper Glavin. Trevin Shirley hauls it in downfield, right over the top, down the seam, and the pass was on the money. I know as we went, as we called that play, you made the point to say Trevin made sure to catch it before he did yeah. anything else. Too many too many times we forget to catch it before we start running, and, and he did a great job. It was a 30-yard pickup with eight and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. Catalyst Design and Graphics catch of the game. Trevin Shirley with that catch in the second quarter, 30 yards for the Tigers. Here, 425 to work third quarter, and they're still working on Ethan Straub to get him loose enough to get into the sideline. Let's take another timeout. Again, you're listening to Tiger Football on 100.9. The quarterback counts on his O-line for protection in the pocket. In Clay Center, you can count on Farm Bureau agents Justin Chapman and Michael Hodges to protect your family's blind side no matter what kind of road you shoot. We're there to handle all your auto, home, farm, life, and business insurance needs. Don't scramble around working with multiple insurance companies. Talk to Farm Bureau agents Justin Tadman and Michael Hodges today. Farm Bureau Life Insurance Company, Farm Bureau Property and Casualty Insurance Company. 28-6, Wamego leads it here. Fourth, third quarter action, 4-25 remaining in there. 
now seeing Ethan Straw be able to walk by himself off the field. So pretty sure there was a left calf cramp, and there ain't much worse than that. We can't lose many more players. Oh, we are. You look, like, you look across the field, and it looks like there's like one unit on our sideline. You're right. This side of the field, it looks like Alabama at all college game. football. Yeah, no kidding. Red Raiders line up for the extra point try. Watson again to kick it. Two of three thus far. Kick here on its way up and through. 425 left third quarter. Tigers trail 29 to 6 here in Wamigo when we come back. When you've got a semi that's not on the road, it's not making money. TSI Kansas can help you get back on the road. Bring it into our full service shop where our experienced mechanics can find and fix the problem. We also have a service truck that can come to you when you can't come to us. Get back on the road with the help of TSI Kansas. Call 785-632-5183. Hometown Lumber and Hardware has great door busters that any grill master would love to have. The 2.5 gallon stainless steel Barber Bayou Deep Fryer with baskets on sale for $178.99. If you need more room to fry those bigger birds, the 4 gallon classic fryer is $208. Try a new flavor on the barbecue grill to give meats a richer taste with Danson's Louisiana Wisconsin Hickory Grill Pellets. The 40 pound bag is $15.99. Find more door busters at Hometown Lumber and Hardware in Marysville. While well, Mako leads it 29 to 6, 425 to go third quarter. Tigers get the football back as they send back deep to receive. Lane Musselman and Sincere Sanders. Jake Ferguson, Jacob Ludwig in front of them. While well, with the kick here in the third. Tigers down 28-6. Kickoff's going to be taken by Musselman. Bobbles for a moment, picks it up, now returns to the middle. And takes his way out near the 30-yard line. There's a penalty flag called from the sideline. Kind of an odd yeah. throw to where it was. Well, it's quite a ways away from where the kick return was. Right. Sideline official threw it to the hash, the hold against the Tigers. So they'll move them back from what was a decent return for Musselman, but They'll move them back inside the 20. Do you have our penalty stat handy? We've had nine penalties for 70 yards. Wow. Wow. I believe it. It seems like more. <laughs> and they started early. We talked about brought it up, both teams, and but the Tigers have seemed to pile them on. 90 yards? Yep, and Wamiga well, also has seven on their side. Wow. Tigers take over well, 16, from their own 20. 16 penalties is why this has been a long game. <laughs> it has been a that and the 28 to 6 scoreboard. Here's Frederick. Handoff underneath. And the ball taken by Logan Mullen across the 25 yard line. Good gain on first down by the Tigers. It'll be a gain of six, second down four. And I've not seen Dawson Humphrey for a while on the field. Logan Mullen does a great job at fullback, but those two guys have been trading time. Dawson on the sideline right now. Second down four. Here's Frederick. Spins left, hands off, Mullen again. First down yardage. And then stood up across the 30-yard line. It'll be first and ten. Tigers, Gunny, Mullen making some moves behind that big offensive line. Uh, he looks good tonight. When he's Every time he's gotten the ball, he's looked good. Now Humphrey is back in at fullback. And Logan gets a break. Simon Lee, the wide receiver, right side. Trevin Shirley, wide to the left. Again, the Tigers lost Cooper Glavin in the first half. Cam Osborne in the third quarter. We're not sure on the status of Ethan Straw, but he's not been back in since he went out with that calf injury, what appeared to be a cramp. First and ten, here's Frederick. Handoff underneath Humphrey. He bites for extra yardage and picks up about three on what looked like no gain. Second down seven. Three minutes remains. Third quarter. Tigers trailing twenty nine to six. Blake Frederick 
barely got that handoff to Dawson Humphrey. He about lost his hands on the deal. Somehow, Humphrey came up with it, and there was positive yardage out of it. Shirley wide right. Lee left. In motion goes Ferguson. And off Humphrey, take room through the middle, first down yardage, and a little bit more, nearly broke it away. He'll take it to the 48-yard line. Good run by Dawson Humphrey behind that offensive line, doing some great work up front. Logan McDonald, Tillman Hartner, Dalton Brumfield, Luke Coppice, Keegan McDonald. First down and 10, 225 remains here in the third. The stat tonight is going to be most of the Clay Center yards are from the fullbacks, the two fullbacks. They have been doing most of the work, that's for sure. Frederick puts Ferguson in motion. Hand off underneath again. This time, Humphrey nowhere to go. It'll be a gain of maybe to the line of scrimmage. No, a loss of one, second down, 11. So the Tigers battling through injuries and some just unique Unique, odd, however you want to term it, plays. When a defensive lineman gets a 60-plus yard return, you know it's an odd night. Yeah, and that happened to the Tigers in the second quarter. Second down 11. Tigers at their own 40-70-yard line. Frederick spins right, hand off to Humphrey. He's met right at the line of scrimmage, just nowhere to go. It's third down and long. I think <laughs> I, I'd like to watch that play on, on tape again. I think when your quarterback goes down fairly violently and then he's laying there in pain and he has his helmet off, I think you kind of just quit on the play. Yeah. And all of a sudden, there's a 200. Maybe you thought he was down. 200 and some. We did. Yeah. And I'll give a shout-out to, let me get this play first, third down and long here is Frederick. Back to pass, rolls left, pressure coming, looks and had to throw it earlier than he wanted to to Trevin. Surely it's going to be fourth down. You know, last year at Abilene, the Tigers had a scoop and score by defensive lineman Garrett Hollywood Craig, you know. Yep. Garrett Craig would have beaten this defensive lineman by 20 yards in that Absolutely. race. I mean, it was, it was that type of run. I mean, the guy made a heck of a play, don't get me wrong, but he was lumbering down the field and just said, you're right, I think everybody just kind of... Yeah, I mean, looked at the quarterback and didn't think about what was going on. Maybe it was the type of run that we had a number of people on the field that you think would catch him. Right, but they weren't anywhere to be seen. Yeah, I agree. Trevin Shirley back on to punt it again for the Tigers. As the snap kick is away, good one downfield, kind of knuckleball picked up by Cooper at his own 23 yard line. Shake and bake move, and he is dangerous out to the 40, 45 near the sideline, and the punter Trevin Shirley able to knock him out of bounds. Wamigo takes it across the midfield stripe on the return. Wamigo had a couple of pretty good blocks set up there, but the big deal was Ty Cooper played off those blocks. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, he doesn't need any more than that. He's up the sideline. So first and 10, Wamigo takes over at the Tiger 48-yard line. Jake Ferguson now playing at safety. Sincere Sanders and as an outside linebacker, here's Cooper from the gun. Correction, that is sack rider now and a quarterback. The carry's going to be taken by Vetter. Sanders makes the tackle for the Tigers, but the run by Vetter to the 40-yard line. So, again, the Red Raiders are now going with Brad Sackrider, the junior quarterback, backup quarterback in, out of that gun. 16 seconds to work. We're in the third. Tigers down 29-6. Option play right. Sack Rider keeps it off the play action fake. Now he breaks the tackle, breaks another to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. It's a touchdown, but there is a flag behind the play, and Zach Elzinga made that call well before the flag was thrown on that. You saw it right away, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. looks like it gets shoved the back there. <laughs> Heck of a run, though, by Zach Ryder at quarterback. He really, I mean, he surprised me that he, did, he made a great run. Tigers missed two or three tackles, but there is a flag down the field. It'll be first and ten, but not a touchdown. And they'll move them back outside maybe the 30-yard line. Every quarterback, every different quarterback brings something different. 
Well, we've been used to the speed of Cooper. Right. Sack Rider is not nearly as fast, but he's more physical and he's bigger. And he gave one heck of a ball fake right there. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Matt the Dot Martin would have loved that ball (laughs) fake he just gave. (laughs) Four seconds left, third quarter, 29 to 6. Sack Rider, poor Wamigo. Hand off underneath the Vetter. He breaks outside left to the 20, 15, 10. He'll beat the Tigers for the pylon. Touchdown, Wamigo again. And now they lead it 35 to 6. The Tigers trailing here as the third quarter comes to a close. They will give the extra point try here for Watson. And better that time just outran the Tiger pursuit. He did. He made the corner, and he made the corner like it wasn't there. You know, right. he was he he was running so smooth. He's running better than he ran in the first quarter at this point in the game. But boy, he had no trouble getting to the corner ahead of our defense. Thirty-five-six. Here's the extra point try and kick is up, and it is good by Watson. We're headed to the fourth. The Tigers trail thirty-six to six when we come back. Putting the highest quality food on the world's dinner table starts with you providing high quality feed to your livestock. Central Valley Ag Feed Meal Manager Dean Nigren is proud to help. Working with farmers and cattlemen really gives you a sense of pride. It's feeding the world. GVA Business Process Manager James Krakemeyer says customers know they can depend on their co-op. If they don't succeed in what they're doing, we can't succeed as a co-op either. You and Central Valley Ag, growing agriculture together. Did you know Patterson's Health Mart Pharmacy delivers? That's right. Patterson understands that for many people, the lack of mobility and transportation make it very difficult to get their necessary prescriptions. That's why Patterson's make daily deliveries Monday through Friday to Clyde, Clifton, Lynn, Wakefield, and Leonardville, as well as Clay Center. You can even get same-day deliveries if you call before noon. Fourth quarter action coming up. The Tigers now trail 36-6. to And uh, while Mego didn't have much offense in the first half, Z, that's well, turned around drastically, hasn't it? Yep, they're up to 235. Wow. It has been all Wamigo in this third quarter. Well, it has, and they scored 21 points in the third quarter. You know, we talked about how the Wamigo offense hadn't scored yet at halftime, even though they were ahead. They found a way to score 21 points and, uh, and do a lot of offense. Tigers will receive the kick here to begin the fourth. Back to receive Sanders and Musselman. They'll kick to the freshman Lane Musselman from his own 11-yard line. Return through the middle. Now tries to cut it out last, and he's just tripped up in the last second. Pretty good cut. Yeah. They just took his legs out from underneath of it. I'm so proud of Lane Musselman out there tonight. Yeah. Both sides of the ball. He's, he's returning kickoffs, playing defensive back, playing Playing on the offense, I mean, he's all over the foot. It looks like he belongs, right? And he's a freshman. Yeah. Tigers take over at their own 29-yard line. No correction, their own 31. Trevin Shirley is wide to the left side. Blake Frederick trying to get, looks like the line sorted out. They may be short a player. Frederick will go under center. Blake spins right and hands off to Dawson Humphrey, who will take it across the 30-yard line. They start from their own 26. I think they said the 31. Their own 26. Out across the 30, a gain of five for Humphrey. It's second down, five to go. Dawson Humphrey up to 75 yards on the night. So the Tigers, again, look at that. Wrist coach, where the plays are on that wristband. Here's Frederick with Moon in motion, and we've got a penalty flag down. Handoff was to Humphrey, but they call procedure against the Tigers before it really got going. Talked about the yardage of the fullbacks for play center tonight. In that first three quarters of play, or at least up to now, Dawson Humphrey, 75 yards. Logan Mullen, 45 yards. Oh, wow. Good stuff. 120 yards on our fullbacks. 
It'll be second down and nine after the five-yard penalty, so that first run by Humphrey was a six-yard gain. 11, 11 to go, fourth quarter, down 36 to six, Tigers with the football. Again, Cooper Glavin, Ethan Straub, Cam Osborne all out of the game due to injury. Here's Frederick. Handoff last second, gets it away to Humphrey, but not much there, maybe gets three. And there is no quit in the run by Dawson Humphrey. Absolutely not. You were just saying the three guys we have out of this game, which means we also have Blake Frederick out on defense right. because of him kind of saving him for quarterback on offense. Third down, seven. It was a gain of three. Tigers from their own 30-yard line. Come for the fullback, Moon and Ferguson, their wingbacks. Wide right is Trevin Shirley. Blake Frederick, a quarterback under center. In motion, Ferguson. Hand off underneath, Humphrey. Bites his way out near the 35-yard line. He'll be a couple of yards shy of the first down, but a gain of three on the play. Brings up fourth down and two with 9.56 to go in the ball game. The Tigers send the hunt unit out. Tigers led 6-0 on the 10-yard touchdown run by Blake Frederick and then the Red Raiders had the kickoff return of 60-plus yards, a fumble that was scooped and scored from 60-some yards by a defensive lineman. And then Wamigo's just really taken off from there. Surely, great punt with pressure coming. Cooper gets it at his own 35. Now out to the right side, trying to turn the corner, gets a block from Vetter to the midfield stripe, to the 40, 35, 30, and finally driven out of bounds. By the uh, Tigers on the play that time, Caden Kramer makes the tackle. There's a penalty flag back well behind the play. It should go against Wamigo. I don't know whether it was a hold or a block in the back. I think it was a block in the back, but we're about to find out, Chet. Oh, a personal foul. Head to head. It's against Wamigo. And maybe a defender who was didn't see the block coming. Yeah. And you cannot deplete people anymore. Right. In a manner. Right. You can put your arms out, but you cannot come at them and level them blindsided. That's my guess. I didn't see right. it, but that's my guess. So this will drive while they go back instead of deep into play centers into the field from where the spot of the foul was. They'll have to move the line of scrimmage back to the Wamego 35. That's a big personal foul. Huge. That is. So the Tigers step up defensively. Dalton Brumfield, Tillman Hartner, Logan McDonald, Braden Dorman up on that front line defensively. Here is Zach Ryder, handoff, left side, and Wamego breaking free, and they may be gone again. Lane Musselman trying to catch the ball carrier for the Wamego Red Raiders, but it's another Wamego touchdown. This is Adler Pearson, the backup running back. And again, missed tackles interior and then good speed, and the Tigers just couldn't catch him downfield. Well, he didn't have anybody left. Once he got five yards into the defensive backfield, defensive secondary, we had nobody left. Everybody was just trying to catch him, and he was pulling away. 42-6 to six now with the extra point coming for Wamigo. Nine minutes remains in this fourth quarter of action. Watson, Chet brought up an interesting point. He missed one, but there was a penalty, and so they scored a two-point conversion on it. He's got another kick up. This one is through as well. 43-6, to six, Tigers trailing, nine minutes to go, fourth quarter when we come back. Growing up in Clay County, fall harvest has always been a very special time of year. From the roar of the combines over our family ground to getting home on a cool harvest night, it's the completion of a growing season. I am Brandon Lee, President and CEO of Union State Bank. Fall is an excellent time to reflect on your operation successes. It's also a time to reflect on your financial needs. From the short-term financing to store your grain to your long-term expansion goals, we have a team of ag lenders ready to serve you. Union State Bank, member FDIC. 
here at Cloud County Community College and invest in your future. When you choose Cloud for your first two years of college, you're choosing savings. Two years of tuition costs at Cloud are nearly $10,000 less than two years at a Kansas public university. Not only can we save you money, but we can offer you scholarships and financial aid to help finance your education. Let us help you explore your options and make your academic goals affordable. For more information, call Cloud's admissions office at 1-800-729-5101 or check us out at cloud.edu. Back again in Wamego, along with our studio engineer, Bernie Pancella, Zach Z-Dog Elzinga, and Randy Chet Carlson on this football Friday night. The Tigers have seen things really get out of hand. They're down 43-6 to right now with nine minutes remaining in this game. It's uh, This is tough right now to keep playing football. It's a tale of two cities, you know, <laughs> the, the first half and the second half. And, and it's just... Nothing fun has happened in the second half. Right. It's been all Wamigo, and Tigers are trying to turn that around a little bit right now as the Red Raiders get set to kick it away again. Lane Musselman and Sir Sanders back to receive. The kick from Wamigo. The whistle is Sanders caught that on a line. That's going to be offsides on Wamigo on the kickoff, so they'll back them up five yards and re-kick it. Somebody anxious to get downfield. Tigers led 6 nothing in the first quarter. Blake Frederick took it in from 10 yards out. And then it's been all Wamigo. The Raiders really were held in check offensively in the first half, but not in the second. No. We did. I mean, we were so proud of how we'd, we'd shut them down. We'd stopped them a few times, even though we gave them a few gifts. Um, but, you know, it's been... It's been a Wamigo show so far in the second half. So Wamigo will re it five yards deeper. Musselman and Sanders now stand at their own 15-yard line. And the Red Raiders will boot it again. And the kick on its way. This time Musselman from his own 15. Return toward the middle. Now breaks it out to the right side. There's a flag way behind the play. This thing is thrown 20 yards away from where I saw anybody around. So, and and it's 40 yards from where the tackle was. Right. Interesting what the call will be, but it's relayed to the white hat by the sideline official. Personal foul. And it's against Wamigo. And that's a blow to the head, not a helmet to helmet, I don't think, like the last call, but this right. is another 15 yard penalty against the Red Raiders. First year head coach Weston Moody on the sideline wanting an explanation from the sideline official, which was on the Red Raiders' sideline, by the way. And that official's happy to give him the explanation. Yeah. You know, but man, these, the flags just keep flying tonight. Both sides. Yeah, it has been a wild ride. 8.54 to work. Tigers, though, take over now near the midfield stripe after the penalty. Trevin Sherwin will be wide left. This official's happy to be over here on this sideline working it and explain it again to anybody that questions him. You want more detail? I can give it to Uh you. Uh-huh, and he's giving it. Tigers with the football. Blake Frederick at quarterback. Logan Mullen now the fullback behind him. Frederick under center. In motion, Ferguson. And handoff underneath Mullen. Not much there. And it'll be a gain of maybe a yard. Tigers on the offensive line. Kale Hauserman now in there, along with Morgan Siebold. Keegan McDonald still at the center position. Dalton Brumfield. Tigers face with second down and nine. Eight and a half to go in this game. I think we could get the Debenham electric, electrifying play of the game. We got up 6 nothing. Blake Frederick takes it in from 10 yards out. You said it when he got the ball in his hands. He was on a mission. Oh, what a tackle in the backfield by Wamigo. Mullen got the handoff and met a defender as soon as he got it. But you said there's no way he wasn't going to get to the end zone as soon as you saw him touch the football. Absolutely. He was 10 yards away, and there were two guys that could tackle him. I knew he was going to get in. I mean, you could just tell 
by his body language right. and the motor he had going, and he did. He got in the inside. That was beautiful. So our Devonham Electric electrifying play of the game, Lake Frederick, that 10-yard touchdown run. Third down and long now for the Tigers, 7.38 to work, clock ticking. Play center with the football near the midfield stripe. Option play left. Frederick pitches late. Dylan Moon. Moon still on his feet to the 50. Down the Wamego's 45-yard line. Very close to first down yardage. Good option play going left that time by the Tigers. They'll be fourth down at about three to go. Football to the Wamego 45. Fourth down three with 7.25 remaining. I have a feeling they're just going to run it. They're not going to send in the bus. They're going to give this group at least a chance to work more Yep. on the offensive side. Clock is ticking down to 7.15 to go. Fourth quarter action. They need to run the play, though. Frederick goes in under center. Fourth and three. Ferguson in motion. Takes the pitch. Handoff underneath Logan Mullen, and he will plow his way forward for first and 10 yardage. He'll take it to the 41-yard line. Gunny able to plow through a couple of extra yards and pick up first and 10. And again, our two fullbacks, they just keep trading off tonight, but they have gotten positive yardage all night long between the tackles. First down and 10, Tigers to the Wamigo 41. Play center trailing here, 43-6 to six in the fourth. Shirley, wide right. Boone and Ferguson, the wingbacks. Mullen stays in at fullback. In motion, Ferguson. Pitch out right to Jake. Catches, has one block, then slides through a tackler down inside the 40-yard line near the 35. A gain of four, maybe five yards by Jake Ferguson. It's second down, and we'll call it six after a four-yard gain. That was quite a run. I mean, he he did a great job of picking up the four or five yards that he got on that. He he cut it up inside the blocker over on the corner and kind of went play and got through the second down six. Shirley wide left. In motion goes Ferguson. They'll hand off underneath this time to Logan Hamill once again. He'll take it inside the 30-yard line. And that'll be first and 10 Tigers with 5.57 to go in the ball game. And the Tigers again trailing 43-6, to six, but marching down the field and finally some momentum rhythm on that offensive side. And Dawson Humphreys on 81 yards. Logan Mullins on 54 yards. Yeah, the numbers aren't going to really tell you no. how this game was dominated by Wamigo, and it, and it truly has been, especially in the second half. First and ten, here's Frederick, handoff underneath. Mullen again, churning for extra yards, takes it to the 25-yard line. Let's look at the spotlight play of the game, because I thought the defensive stand after the turnover against the Tigers, it's first and goal at the three and the Five Creek Automotive spotlight play of the game is when the defense found a way to stop at the one on downs yep. and make a huge goal line stand. Here's Frederick again. Pitch left. Or Ferguson, it's overthrown toward the sideline. Jake has to just wrap it up and get down. That quick pitch left deep, and it went a little high, and Jake did a good job to go grab it and make sure they didn't give up the football. Again, your Five Creek Automotive spotlight play of the game. Big defensive play right near the pylon. While they go about to push in their first score of the game, and the Tiger defense came up with a stop. Yeah, and we we really should give it to the whole four plays. Yeah, you know, you're because right. Because we gave them the ball at the three yard line. Third down, thirteen for the Tigers. Frederick back to pass, rolls right, has a little time now. Pressure now fakes off a tackle now throws on the move, and it's going to be broken up the last second trying to get it to Jake Ferguson in a nice defensive play downfield by the Red Raiders. Batted away that time by Ryan Erickson. Blake Frederick had a lot of pressure on him there. He he was dodging tacklers so much that it took he and Jake Ferguson out of their rhythm, you know, to really let that play develop like it was supposed to, right. which enabled the defender to get on Jake Ferguson a lot better. We didn't get we didn't get to run that in the time that it's supposed to be run, or Jake would have gone for a way. Fourth down, 13. Clock stops at 4.37 to go fourth. Fourth and 13 at the Red Raider 33. Frederick back to pass. 
Fires downfield and just overthrows Dylan Moon. Shirley running a post inside. Moon out of the backfield running the outs to the outside. And it just was overthrown. Moon couldn't quite catch up with it. While Mego takes over possession. When he launched that pass, I thought, who are you throwing that to? Because I just saw the post pattern. Right. And then all of a sudden, there's Dylan Moon over there because he got kind of, he's not real tall. Right. <laughs> got lost in the mix down there. I didn't think. see him. <laughs> all of a sudden, it's just over his outreach hand. So Wamigo takes over first down and 10. And now they will bring in a quarterback, Culver. Well, I have no light here at all. Collier Brummett is the quarterback for the Red Raiders. And he will keep it himself, tackled in the backfield, wrapped up and put away that time by Brumfield for the Tigers. 4.20 left in the game. Clock ticking with Wamigo on top, 43-6. to six. Tigers are back at home again next week. Here's an option left. And Brumfield's going to keep it. Brought down that time by Dawson Humphrey. First hit, Brian Bent for a freshman in there. And if you've heard us say freshman and sophomore a lot over the last three weeks, there is a reason. Uh, this is a young Tiger team. Third down four. Wamigo with the football, 340, and clock sticking here in the fourth. The Tigers trailing 43-6. Here's Brummett, option play, pitch right. And Sanders makes the tackle out on the edge for the Tigers. Here at that time by Wamigos, Ledger Rowden. Wamigo faced with fourth and two. And they will line up to go for it. A lot of bodies out there for the Red Raiders. They rotate people in. Tigers have Braden Dorman and Brian Benfer up on the front row defensively. Morgan Siebold. And Kale Hauserman out there. So Dorman, Siebold, Benfer, Hauserman, the front four of the Tigers defensively. Fourth down a yard to go, and Flamigo will punt it. And he kicks away from Jake Ferguson, who was back, and it's angled out of bounds. And the Tigers will take over at their own... 22-yard line, it looks like. Well, Amigo leads 43-6. to six. The sophomore, Brady Henderson, pretty good punt by the Red Raiders, to be yeah. honest. Pretty impressive. He got the top spin roll on it, too. Yeah, no kidding. Well, I guess the last thing to hand out is our Midwest product stat of the game. <laughs> Did we decide on something? I mean, there's some crazy stats in this ball game. How about we give it to our fullback? That's oh, what I was going to say. I like that idea. Put Jack, I do. Because they, they put up great numbers tonight. Yeah, what is it a tough game. night? Humphrey had 81 yards and uh, Mullen had 58. And they may add to it here. But that, those are good numbers. Yeah, they had a large chunk of that 200 yards rushing for the Tigers. So our Midwest product stat of the game is the work of our fullbacks tonight, Dawson Humphrey and Logan Mullen. Doing good work there from that fullback position. 234 remains in the ball game. We have a timeout on the field. The Tigers, a lot of new personnel in there trying to get them in position. So timeout is called. Stay with us, Tiger football. The finish coming up here for Mwamigo. The week of September 9th through 15th is nationally recognized as driver appreciation week. Here at TSI Kansas, we want to say thank you, not only to our drivers, but all the drivers out there. We appreciate your hard work, sacrifices, and dedication to safety. Rely on TSI Kansas. 
Robbins Motor Company of Manhattan is a proud supporter of Tiger football. It's time for their Ram Power Days. Get to Robbins Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Fiat. Come test drive the all-new 2019 Ram truck, the longest-lasting truck in America, now priced to move with Ram Power Days discounts and 0% for 72 months. Now is the time to buy. See their complete inventory online at RobbinsMotors.com or come visit them on West Anderson in Manhattan. Good luck, Tigers. Out of the timeout, the Tigers are going to pitch left to Lane Musselman, and he takes it out across the 30-yard line, a gain of four, maybe five yards on the first down carry. Second down, call it five to go. 219 remains. The Tigers, again, back at home next week, and district play does begin next week. Six teams, top four, advance to a ninth-week playoff game. The two that don't advance will play a ninth game, but with no chance to advance from there. That's right. Every team does get nine games in. Here's Frederick. Ball taken away, and Wamego's going to cover it up with a minute 53 to work. It was a fake underneath, and the he and the running back, I didn't see who came through the middle that time. But no, I didn't either. Kind of kept the hands on and both tried to hold on to it, and it pops free, and so Wamego takes it over. They leave the Tigers 43-6 to here in this fourth quarter. And the Red Raiders... We'll have it at the Tiger 26-yard line. At quarterback again for Wamigo. Collier Brummett. Brummett works it left. Tucks it, runs to the middle. And big-time hit for the Tigers at that time. It's Braden Dorman who made the play. Stuck his head in there and made a big-time stop right in the middle of the field. Braden Dorman, one of the Tigers' seniors, with a big-time stick. Second down eight. Minute 29 remains. Brummett wants to pass it now. Fires out in the flats, and it didn't complete. Trying to hit Cedric Lynn, Musselman on coverage. Then it's 22 to work, 43 to 6, by the way, the score, guys. Pass incomplete on third down, on second down at seven. And come brings up third down. Yeah. Tigers getting a couple of substitutions in here late. Here is a handoff, right side carry. And the Tigers. Able to come up with the play again. That is Braden Dorman one more time. He just kind of bulldogged him down on the outside. Did, and that's exactly what it did. Look like a good old bulldogger. Minute three remaining here, fourth quarter. Well, Amigo's going to go to two and one. The Tigers will drop to 0 oh and three. Brummett. And off underneath. And he turns the corner, trying to make a stop. The Tigers, Clayton Strecker, does bring him down at the five with 45 seconds remaining. Well, he got the first down plus about 15 yards. No kidding. So first and goal, we'll see if the Red Raiders punch it in or go to victory. 45 seconds remains here in this final period. They lead 43-6. to six. And they will not go to victory. Line up. No, they did take a knee. Down to 36 seconds remaining. J.W. Jackson made sure they were going to a knee. He was shooting <laughs> through the line that time on the from the linebacker position. Like, Don't take that. <laughs> 20 seconds left. They will not have to snap it here. And that will end the ball game. The Wamigo Red Raiders win it 43 to 6. They go to 2 and 1. Tigers drop to 0 and 3. Stay with us. Our post game coming up in just a moment. 
Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. Ray's Apple Market continues to bring you savings every week to stretch your grocery dollars. One way is with Ray's Apple Market app. Download it today and start saving money right away. You can click on a variety of items you need and the instant coupons are applied at checkout. Over 8,000 users are adding up the savings and like the convenience of having the savings in the palm of their hands. You'll never know what you can save until you start using the app from Ray's Apple Market. Back again, we bring you to Amigo Clay Center Tigers, a 43-6 loss to the Red Raiders. Our post-game show is being brought to you by GN Bank, BND Sandblasting and Painting, RW Pest Control, and Cloud County Community College. And tough night. Uh, Z, we'll start with you. The stats in the first half didn't tell the tale of this game. It was more Clay Center with Yardies than Wamego. That changed drastically, didn't it? It was the exact opposite of the second half. Omigo broke out, and they ended up with uh, 300 yards rushing and just over 330 for the game. And uh, play center finished with 241 total offense. And uh, the bulk of that from the fullbacks, I'm guessing, for the Tigers. Why don't you give us the numbers on uh, Dawson? And, and uh, okay. We had uh, 81 for Humphrey and 58 for Mullen. Good work by the fullbacks, uh, Tigers got a lead, 6 nothing. They had really staved off what looked like a, a terrible start to the game with what with the field position and all those different things in the first quarter. You take a lead and then things fell apart. Yeah. We took the lead. Things had been falling apart before we took the lead. Right. But we escaped We escaped a couple of major mistakes. Right. And we're, all of a sudden we have this lead. And then we made a few more mistakes, but we were still in it. Yeah, I mean, and then it just went crazy. The uh, Tigers' 43-6 loss. Uh, in the first two games, there were things that you, know, you clean this or that up, and it could be a different ball game. This is one you got to go back and and just mentally make yourself get back to work. It's, it's tough after a game like this. You have to regroup at every level at with everything. You have, I mean, we got to find out what our personnel is. And, and some very key positions at this point as well. I mean, we had we had three guys leave the game that were starters. Cooper Glavin at quarterback and safety, out first half. Cam Osborne, early third, out, plays both ways. Um, Ethan Straub, later out, didn't come back in the ballgame, plays both ways. And Blake Frederick went in at quarterback, and that took him off the defensive side because you you got to protect your QP. You've already lost your number one, and so... It's a tough night for the Tigers. It was a very tough night. Uh, that 50-whatever-mile uh, ride home is going to seem like 150 on the getting. bus. You know? And I think the Tigers that were able to make it through the game and not get knocked out are beat up. Oh. I mean, they are – it was a physical game out there. It well, was. Well. Yeah, well, maybe it was impressive tonight as well, I believe. Uh, speed was – Amazing for this team. I wasn't expecting that out of you. No, no, not at all. Do a final on the Wakeful Bombers. They did lose 30 to 20. Made a great comeback effort there. Also, Chapman 26 nothing uh, in a win tonight, and Marysville 42 to nothing over Concordia. Uh, the league matchups here. The Tigers drop a 43-6 ball game. They host Chapman next week. That is week one of district play. So to wrap it up here from Wamigo for our studio engineer Bernie Fancella. Randy Carlson, Zach Elzinga, this is Rocky Downing telling you to enjoy the rest of your football Friday.